Okay, this is a test just to make sure that the microphone is working. Let me know, uh, and we're going to get into this uh, right here in a second. First of all, uh, let's uh, let's hear from everybody, okay? Just like always, it's been a while. It's been a while since we've done this. So let's. Where's everybody from? I'm looking at chat right now. Um, I would love to hear from everybody. Uh, where's everybody watching from? Where's everybody listening from? Um, just so I can get a better idea of exactly what we're dealing with here, son. Okay. What are we dealing with? Who? Where's our audience from? Hopefully, we've got a bunch of people uh, watching right now from Missouri, Arkansas, portions of Oklahoma, Tennessee, um, maybe even into Kentucky, down there in the Alabama, Texas, um, because we've got a pretty big severe weather situation uh, unfolding right now uh, in the southern uh, U.S., 10% hatched uh, risk of tornadoes tonight as per, per the Storm Prediction Center. And uh, that is why we're live right now. We've set a criteria um, that, uh, you know, has to or a threshold that has to be broken in, in the forecast realm uh, to to kind of prompt our lives. And this is the first time that criteria has been broken for quite some time. So, I, you know, a lot of people ask, like, have you quit live streaming? What's going on, son? It's like, no, the weather's just been it's summer. OK, it's summer. And we're starting to see that it's summer um, in these storms today. This is not your typical spring uh, severe weather uh, outbreak kind of thing. Uh, we've got some, uh, you know, problems today with uh, the con convection. We've got some problems today with uh, the storms being able to rotate some uh, prefrontals didn't pop pop up but now it looks like they're going to the models have been wrong <laughs> and they're all over the place which is something that you deal with in one of these kinds of systems in august so we're we're no longer forecasting okay take you what you know about the weatherman in your heart and soul i want you to crumple that up and throw it in the trash son forecasting is not a thing today we are now casting we're looking at the here and now and that is um <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing uh, currently there are no tornado warnings okay but we've been watching very closely at uh, this storm over here near Gainesville and in fact uh, we've got one of our storm chasers uh, on this storm right now uh, Brad Arnold uh, he right when we were starting the, the stream he came across on the radio to me and he said Ryan I've got a bowl funnel on stream here and I saw it uh, but that has since went away I don't know if he's repositioning or what so let's ask him right now Brad, uh, we're live on YouTube. Just wanted to get an update from you. We saw that uh, bull funnel. Um, what's going on now? Do you still see something? To give us an update. So this is uh, Storm Chaser. Uh, Brad Arnold drove all the way from uh, old Alabama to, to uh, be able to show us what's going on up here in Arkansas and Missouri. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, we had that bull funnel just west of Gainesville. Um, it, it, it crossed just to the, uh, just to the uh, south of the highway right there. Um, I, de I never saw it touch the ground. There was no, there was never any ground circulation that I could tell. It's tough to tell with the mountains, but um, it was it was very low. Um, had rapid rotation with it. Um, it looks to be losing a little bit of steam with the rota with the rotation. Starting to get a lot of storms that are firing up around it. Um, we're heading east right now, about to come into the city of Gainesville and continue east with the storm. Um, it does have a history of a uh, good rotation with it. Um, so we're going to stick with it for a little while, but there are a lot of storms out there and hopefully we can get the right one to be on. Awesome. So that is an update from our storm chaser, uh, Brad Arnold. We call him the tornado sniffer out here. Okay, because uh, for some reason, no matter where this man goes, there's a tornado. Um, it's almost like he summons them and he's chosen this storm today. Okay, uh, over here, right on the border of um missouri and uh um uh, arkansas sorry i'm rusty it's been a second <laughs> Uh, so that's what we're looking at here. Uh, and currently these do uh, have a considerable severe thunderstorm warnings uh, associated with them, mainly for the wind and hail, right? We've got 70 mile per hour winds getting ready to move into Gainesville uh, and potentially one and a half inch in diameter uh, hail getting ready to move into these same areas all the way down towards Bull Shoals and Mountain Home. Okay. 
So that is what we are looking at over here. We're also looking at some storms a little bit farther to the west in southwestern Missouri. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning that expires in 36 minutes for places like Cove, Washburn, Eagle Rock, all the way over to Emeralds Beach. Uh, and we are watching some storms try to pop up south of Tulsa as well. We're currently looking at um, Oklahoma over here. You can see right along Highway 412, we've got a storm that has popped popped up out in front of the main line. And it's these little sails that we're gonna be watching very closely over the next couple of hours. We got one over here near Bentonville and Rogers. We've got one uh, you know, a little bit farther south towards Eureka Spring in Arkansas. Those could interact with the environment that prompted the 10% hatched risk. Um, is that does that mean anything? I don't know. Um, that we're that's what we're doing here now. Okay, that's why we are here together right now. We are now casting. The environment is favorable for potential uh, tornadoes, potentially even significant tornadoes tonight. And if one of these storms starts in interacting with that environment, uh, it's gonna go nuts. It, it is going to go nuts and potentially cause a big bad tornado. So that's what we are here to, um, you know, just in case that happens, we are going to be here for you. Now, also, just in case that happens, we've stepped up our game a little bit with the Y'all Squad, okay? Uh, we've got the Y'all Squad uh, mobile out there now. That, that's actually the live stream that you see above my head. Uh, Carly, we should probably switch that, though, um, to Brad. Let's put Brad in the number one spot. Um, but we do have, um, uh, yeah, there's Riley. <laughs> Uh, we do have the uh, the the, our, the Y'all Squad mobile out there, and that's uh, all of our core members of the Y'all Squad. Uh, they're currently, I think, they're in Missouri right now. They they've been driving for like eight or nine hours today uh, just to try to get close to these storms, just in case the Y'all Squad does need to show up. They've got the credit cards. They've got you know all the people who ha hold positions in the Y'all Squad who are able to make big decisions. They're all there, so that it, just in case a town gets hit or something today, we can literally immediately uh, start doing what we need to do and there's not this delay where you know we're in eastern Kentucky and we've got to worry about like who's going to do this and who's going to do that we are already there and there's also a chance that uh, we run into a storm or two um, uh, on the way so we'll see that through the um, um, the y'all squad mobile got to think of a better name for that uh, we also have um uh, we also have Chandra out there. Let me see. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, we also have Chandra out there in the Y'all Squad Mobile, and uh, she's going to be giving us uh, some updates uh, throughout the day. Uh, Chandra is going to be acting as our news relay today, uh, and we're going to be talking to her as needed. Once again, Chandra is very busy out there. She's kind of um, organizing the movement uh, just in case we do need to go uh, to one of these towns. Um, so yeah, just wanted to give you a, an update on everything that's going on. We've got our normal setup with our storm chasers out there, uh, but we've also got the y'all squad, uh, right there on the doorstep of these storms, just in case. Uh, speaking of storms, let's go over some of these one by one here. Okay. We do have that severe thunderstorm warning for Gainesville that's moving in right now. It's, it's definitely a big storm going on in Gainesville right now. Um, and also that's getting ready to start down here in mountain home in Arkansas. And uh, we also have the severe thunderstorm back here that's moving into Cove and Washburn. And uh, we do have a couple more severe thunderstorm warnings back here along the Red River uh, area near Denison in Texas. These are mainly uh, just wind producers right now. The hail isn't even that big with them. But let, let me show you what's going on over here um, <laughs> in Alabama. Look at this. Y'all, have y'all checked on Alabama? Yeah, have y'all seen what's going on down here? It looks like a tornado outbreak um, Armageddon is currently happening. If you really take a look at what's going on here, we've got massive supercells with hooks. Um, even if we switch over to uh, the velocity here, um, we do have some rotation here, especially if we go up a couple tilts. Um, <laughs> lots of uh, mesocyclones going on out here in Alabama today. And don't get me wrong, guys. These are very, very strong storms. We've got a lot of considerable severe thunderstorm warnings out here. We're talking 60, 70 mile an hour winds, golf ball size hail. But the tornado threat with these is actually not very high at all. Okay, there's not a lot of nader juice out there. There's not a lot of 
wind shear at the lowest levels where you really need it. Now, there's plenty of it uh, higher up in the storms. That's why we can clearly see those hooks. That's why we can clearly see those uh, well-defined supercells down here. But where the magic really happens, right at the bottom of that storm, uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, the correct ingredients in place. Therefore, we're not, thankfully not seeing a, a tornado outbreak in Alabama right now, but we would have been if uh, just a few ingredients would have been different here. Okay, so uh, this is the current state of Alabama all around uh, Birmingham and to the south and east. We're seeing some crazy storms. Uh, I mean, pretty much every county here from Birmingham all the way down to Auburn is under a severe thunderstorm warning. So uh, make sure you're paying attention to that. And I don't want to sit here and say that there's going to be no tornadoes in Alabama today. There's definitely a possibility that one of these pulls some sort of atmospheric miracle and decides to plop down a tornado. Um, uh, but whether or not that happens, you need to be taking uh, precautions anyways, because these are strong storms with or without tornadoes. I'm also kind of concerned about the potential for flash flooding. You can see how a lot of these storms are moving the, in the same direction and they're moving over the same community. So after you get done with one of them, another one's going to hit you. Um, if that happens two, three, four times, you end up with three inches of rain or so in a short period of time. Flash flooding is definitely going to be a problem. That this blue dot right here, that's the location of the Y'all Squad mobile right now near Dyersburg, Tennessee, moving uh, to the west. I think their plan is to try to get close to uh, this storm over here at some point near Mountain Home because this is the one that we've been watching. But look at this. We've also got little cells popping up out in front of it. So these right here could become tornadic tonight. And that's what we're going to continue to watch. We're watching that very closely. Uh, we're also taking a look at these. Okay, Everything that pops up out in front of the main line tonight is going to be hyper, hyper uh, inspected uh, for the potential for rotation because that's what, you know, that, that's really where the, the main axis of uh, energy and nadir juice and everything is. Look at the big wind bag coming out of Gainesville here. That's what you're looking at on uh, Brad Arnold's stream right now. Um, he is in this severe thunderstorm warning out here near Mammoth and Clark Ridge. I think uh, on the Radar Omega app, let me make sure I'm not wrong. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I had him turned off there, Bulls. What am I doing? <laughs> Um, if you go to the Radar Omega app, how many of you guys, raise your hand in chat if you have Radar Omega. Hopefully everybody does. Um, if you don't, link in the description. Um, it's the only app where you can do this. You can literally go to it right now, find Brad Arnold's wonderful face, okay? Click on it and see his live stream, okay? 100 of you guys watching with me right now. You can also see the outdoor temperature and everything on his vehicle. And also... Also, you can see his live location and where he is relative, you know, in the storm. So he's just now getting into the thick of it. Um, so let's come back over here to uh, Brad's stream. You can see that's a very strong storm. Um, in fact, that is still got a, a considerable severe thunderstorm warning with it. So 70 mile an hour winds are possible in and around where Brad is right now. And look at that. Y'all are going nuts. I said, um, raise your hand in chat if you got Radar Omega. It looks like most of us do. If you don't, hey, listen, you do you, man. I can't tell, make you do anything, but I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it, you, there's a reason I go on and on about it, and it's not just because they're a partner uh, with the channel. I was doing that long before then. It's a good app. It's what I'm using here right now. Um, and if you've ever been interested in getting a Radar app, that's the one you should get. Link in the description. Um, so yeah, if you're just now tuning in, we are doing wall to wall severe weather coverage today, uh, with, uh, a team of some of the best storm chasers on earth. We've got Brad Arnold out there. We've got Nick Gorman. We've got, uh, Tom, we've got Zach, we've got, uh, Ryan party. Uh, and we even have the y'all squad, uh, mobile. Hey Ryan, do you chamber. copy? Um, and Nick's coming through right now. Let's talk to Nick. Yeah, go ahead, Nick. I'm getting visual on the uh, storm that Brad's on, if you want to see the structure. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, Nick's got visual on the storm that Brad's on. 
Uh, so this is the storm, the the south of it. storm that Brad is underneath right now, uh, but we actually have a different vantage point from Nick here. And you can see the structure, you can see the base of it. You can see that the this is still, it looks to me like a, a growing storm and it's still sucking in new warm, moist air there. You can see some of the lowerings there on the, uh, the, the bottom side of the storm. So that tells me that this is obviously a storm that we're gonna be watching for uh, quite some time as one of two things is going to happen with it. It's going to turn into some sort of big rotating uh, mesoscale uh, system that uh, might have intermittent uh, tornadic troubles as it approaches Cherokee Village, eventually Jonesboro and places like that. Um, uh, but another thing that could happen here is this turns into a huge outflow dominant wind bag uh, with potentially 70 to 80 mile per hour winds uh, just racing down northeastern Arkansas here, maybe even making it all the way down towards Memphis later. So that's what we're watching there. This part of this storm uh, is going to be very dangerous, regardless of whether it produces tornadoes or not. Um, the more interesting areas, in my opinion, for potential uh, tornadic activity is going to be back here just a little bit. Um, these, this storm really isn't rotating that much. Um, all of these uh, prefrontals or, you know, these supercells, the potentially discrete supercells that are popping up, they don't look too impressive just yet. Um, but things obviously could change as they grow upscale, uh, and the environment's going to continue to get better uh, over the next hour or so. Uh, we're in the dead of summer, so the sun's just now starting to go down. Uh, we still are likely going to see somewhat of an increase in that low-level jet when the sun goes down like we normally do in the spring, but that, that usually happens around 7 p.m. rather than 9 p.m. But here we are, uh, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, just waiting and watching these storms to see what's going to happen next. I, I, I do see a huge um, potential for a mesoscale convective system here, um, and that's probably the main thing that we're looking at right now, uh, unless something new starts popping up. So uh, we also have um, uh, meteorologist uh, Andy Hill here with us. He'll be chiming in from time to time. He still has the ability to turn the lights uh, green. And... Um, for the people in the Y'all Squad Mobile, just let Carly know anytime you have something for me, um, and she will turn the lights orange. We'll get to you guys. I don't want to. I, I don't know what you guys are currently doing, so I don't want to just throw the the mic to you uh, unprepared. So you just let me know when you're ready, and we'll have a quick chit chit chat with either one of y'all. Also got uh, a bunch of people behind the scenes helping us monitor uh, scanner feeds, news feeds, and all that stuff. A lot of people go into this, and that's one of the reasons why we don't go live for every single thunderstorm. <laughs> people always get mad, you know, sometimes it storms and we're not live. Well, you know, we, it takes a lot for us to go live, and we try to preserve this for some of the higher-end events. I think it just makes sense. Uh, and then we cover everything else through our videos and for our TikToks and shorts and stuff like that. Okay. The lights are orange, so uh, I'm actually going to pull up um, full screen here, I believe, if I can remember how to do this. Go. I'm going to pull up full screen the Suburban. So uh, go ahead, uh, Chandra, or, or Riley. Riley's got the mic. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ryan, you hear me? Yes. All right, so just a little update from us. We are currently in the uh, boot hill of Missouri. Um. I do agree with you that this is probably going to be more of an MCS kind of day. The reason I'm saying that is just being here and being in the environment, it feels a little too cool. Uh, the morning convection might have just hung around just a little too long, so that would hopefully limit our tornado potential. So it might not be as bad as what we thought it was going to be. However, there's definitely still going to be the chance for tornadoes, so we need to be watching out for those today. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and now um, meteorologist Andy Hill has something for us. Uh, go ahead, Andy. 
Hey, Ryan. Yeah, I'm here too. Hopefully you guys can hear me fine. I've been taking a look at the back end of things, the science behind this and seeing why we're seeing storms look like this now and why we may not uh, realize this high end of a tornado threat as we could have seen today. And uh, the most interesting thing I was able to pick out was uh, the bulk shear. So it's literally zero to about four miles above your head. The average wind direction is uh, blowing from west to east. And if you look at the storms on uh, the radar right now, right next to me, you can see that the storms are also oriented from west to east in a line like this. And uh, when those two things come together, it means that storms are basically going to congeal into that line and it's going to mean less of a tornado threat is present. So that's one element that I wanted to point out today while I scan for uh, rotation in our now casting live stream here. Just want to make sure I'm looking in the science in the back end and putting the pieces together. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Andy. Uh, always appreciated uh, uh, Andy's input here. And once again, guys, uh, both um, Andy, uh, Riley, and um, you saw Chandra there. All, all three of them are going to be chiming in pretty uh, frequently tonight, uh, especially if we, we start seeing things uh, get going on the severe weather end. And things are already starting. Uh, we've got some reports coming in of, um, you, you know, power lines being down, uh, trees are down, you know, pretty uh, significant wind damage is, is coming out of uh, the storm here near Mountain Home, and I think that's going to get worse as it moves off to the south and east. So if you're in Cherokee Village, all the way down to Calico Rock, Melbourne, uh, literally to Jonesboro, maybe even as far south as Memphis, this is probably going to, to make it to you at some point, and it will probably continue to carry these damaging winds with them. So we're going to um, not only tell you when it's coming and, and track the storm and, and all that stuff, but we're hopefully going to be able to provide some sort of news for you as to what's happening in these towns after the storm goes by. That's what uh, that's one of the things that uh, Chandra is going to help us with today. Uh, and then uh, while that's happening, we're also we've got plenty to watch over here with these storms, um, even though the, the tornado threat isn't extremely high uh, today uh, it is still there and we've got to watch uh, all these storms very carefully so that's what we're uh, doing there and I I'm looking at chat here uh, first of all I, I do want to say everybody thanks to everybody for uh, being here um, I, I hopefully you hopefully you remember me <laughs> It's been a while since we've been live here, uh, but uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's uh, dropping by and, um, you know, saying hi. We've got the fat man here. David said, keep him safe, Ryan. Uh, Brian says, y'all will drive. I like that one. I like that one. Also saw y'all force one earlier. I think that's a pretty good one. Um, let's see here. Hoping everyone is safe and the severe weather stays away. Me too, Teresa, uh, and Gail, uh, thank you for stopping by as well. So lots of stuff uh, going on here in chat. Um, thank you guys. And, um, we will be talking a lot throughout the night. Okay. Uh, I will be periodically looking over there. Uh, also another thing I'm going to be periodically uh, looking at is Twitter or wait, what did I say? <laughs> Um, I mean, X, I think, right? <laughs> that's another thing that's changed uh, since the last time we, we spoke to each other. Um, X uh, or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, is a huge part of our operation here. We, um, we crowdsource a lot of our storm reports, right? You guys are just as much our storm chasers as uh, Brad Arnold for the most part. So if you know if something's happening in your hometown, as long as you can do so safely, if you want to send me a report, a picture, a video, or anything like that, uh, do that on Twitter, X, at Ryan Hall, y'all. I've also got Facebook and Instagram. We're monitoring that, but the best way to get across to me is through Twitter. Once again, at Ryan Hall, y'all. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm also monitoring that. And, uh, we will show the as we get them in cap. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Oh, and there's, I already see a bunch of you uh, sharing the stream. Uh, please keep doing that. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, take a video of it, screen record it, get it out there, uh, do whatever you can to help us spread the word um, so that we can get this vital information in front of as many people as possible. And looky there, the lights is green. So that means it's time to talk to Andy. What's up, Andy? 
Hey Ryan, I'm just watching the uh, the storm that is going through Mountain Home in Arkansas right now in Baxter County. Uh, there are quite a few damaging wind reports uh, back behind where it just traveled through south of Gainesville in Missouri along the state line there. And uh, some of them include power lines down. So I just want to issue another heads up uh, for y'all in the path of this thing. It is going through Mountain Home right now. Probably the worst of the damaging winds are just off to your north and east if you live in that area in Baxter County. Um, so down the line, that's Ash Flat along Highway 62. Some pretty powerful damaging winds are going to come through your area, and I don't see a reason for this to uh, weaken at all in the near term. So please be ready for that. Probably a lot of lightning with the storm as well. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. And some of the places uh, that this will go even beyond that, because I think that this is going to be a long-standing feature um, in the overall stormscape tonight. Calico Rock, Oxford, Cherokee Village, all the way down to potentially uh, Mountain View, Southside, Newark, Tuckerman, uh, Walnut Ridge, uh, and then all the way down there to Jonesboro. So uh, all you guys need to be getting ready for some powerful winds tonight. And of course, uh, if this, even if this goes completely linear, it'll be interacting with some wind shear, and there is a possibility uh, that uh, we even get some spin-up uh, tornadoes inside of any line that forms tonight. So we've got to be uh, hyper aware of that as well. Right now, um, on reflectivity, the uh, tail end Charlie back here on this line uh, does look like it's trying to rotate a little bit, but it's not rotating a whole lot. Uh, so we, we don't really have much to look at there. Um, but maybe Andy's got some other news for us. Go ahead, Andy. Nope, Ryan, I'm actually going to direct your, well, I guess I do have other news. I'm going to direct your attention back down to Alabama, uh, since a lot more people have filtered in since we first talked about this area. I want to bring it back up because it looks like there's, you know, five, six supercells here. And at any point, there have been several supercells going through Alabama, but none of them have had a tornado warning with them. This one just west of the, the Birmingham metro here near Hueytown, approaching Bessemer, uh, that one does look like one of the most concerning storms. And uh, if you look at the velocity, you can see that it's trying to do something there. Uh, but the reason why it probably won't is because we don't have any of that low level shear, literally how the winds change in uh, speed and direction. Basically for the first half mile above your head is where we're really watching this. Uh, if that were strong, then we would uh, see all of these supercells being really big problems as they move through Alabama. But that's why you didn't get a tornado watch on your phone down here in Birmingham or Montgomery. Um, it's just because we don't have that shear in place. And that's really good because we don't want a tornado outbreak. So just be prepared for damaging winds with these storms and probably some brief uh, bouts of really heavy rain. You guys have gotten that a lot this summer, but um, we are watching it just in case some a uh, freak mesoscale accident does happen with any of these supercells slamming together or something that could produce a brief tornado, but for now, it looks all right. Okay. Thank you, uh, Andy. And I, I see uh, a lot of you guys are talking about how uh, my mic is low now. Um, I'm going to try to add something here to fix that. Um, it, there's something wrong with the mic. I, I don't know what it is, but sometimes it's way too loud. Sometimes it's way too quiet. I just turned it up as much as I could, uh, but thank you for pointing that out. Uh, and also thank you, Andy, for um, uh, talking to us about these uh, very interesting looking storms uh, down here in um, Alabama. Lots of stuff going on down here. And like we talked about earlier, uh, the biggest concerns uh, for you guys, at least in the uh, short term, is going to be wind and hail and possibly even uh, some flash flooding. The tornado threat is there. It's just not nearly as bad as it looks on radar. In fact, it's very, very small uh, at this point. So uh, we're going to be going back and forth. We're going to be continuing to look at these storms in Alabama. Let's, But let's go back to Missouri and Arkansas. This is our target area today. This is the main zone um, and the storm prediction center did just come out with a brand new mesoscale discussion so what what are we discussing here what what, what are they saying well for the southern extent of that uh, tornado watch that was issued earlier there is a diminishing confidence in the severe threat meaning that the storms that were supposed to pop up down there didn't and it looks like they're probably not going to 
And then up a little bit farther to the north, um, the severe uh, weather risk continues, and that's actually where the greatest near-term severe risk is. Uh, so we, I think we did get a new watch uh, in that area, new tornado watch, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there you go. So a brand new tornado watch for the area where the greatest near-term uh, severe weather risk is. A couple tornadoes possible. Scattered hail up to two inch in diameter, likely, and scattered wind gusts up to 75 miles per hour, likely. We've got 1.2 million people in that one. Uh, that includes Cherokee Village, Batesville, Herber Springs, Little Rock, and Waldron. Uh, so that's going to go all the way until 3 a.m. Central. 3 a.m. Central. We got a tornado watch out here in North Central Arkansas. So if you know anybody, absolutely anybody who lives in that area, let them know. Let them know what's going on. And we also have an update from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, this is, I was on the edge of my seat waiting for this one. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised to see that we still have the 10% hatched uh, tornado risk here. So basically what that means is that the environment is certainly continuing to be, um, uh, how, do, how do I word this? The environment for potential tornadoes is still out there, okay? The way that this was initially forecast Maybe that's not exactly going to be the way that it goes, uh, but the storms that are getting ready to get into northern Arkansas are going to be capable still uh, still uh, to produce tornadoes and potentially even significant ones. So that is something, uh, it's a good thing that we went live here because it, at some point here uh, during the evening, it's possible that these storms start putting down uh, tornadoes. So let's, uh, let's talk to Andy real quick uh, because... Remember, guys, we're going to be here with you for several hours tonight, regardless of whether there's tornadoes or not. OK, we can sit here talking all day about whether or not it's going to happen. Uh, but um, what really matters is the severe wind and everything. We're going to be here for you. So, Andy, let, let's hear what you got. Yeah, Ryan, uh, in accordance with that and seeing where this new corridor for the 10% hatch uh, exists as of the latest update, something I talk about on my streams when I cover the weather uh, quite often is the orientation of the storm. So I'm going to build on what I talked about just a little bit ago where the bulk wind shear is moving from west to east and most of the storms are oriented along a line west to east. But out in front here, uh, the storm that we were watching near Mountain Home, Viola, Salem, uh, that one is starting to, you know, take a little bit of a curve uh, and look, get some north-south component to it. So we call that meridional uh, component. And when it looks like this, I bet that that is where we could see some of the near-term tornado threat if it keeps um, having that component to it. So that's where I'm watching most closely. You can see there's broad rotation on it now, even though we're entering that radar hole that we were discussing before the stream. So um, that's where my eyes are most closely. I, I think that would be the greatest near-term tornado threat given how the storms look right now and also if you aren't uh, watching the uh, stream text you should be in there as well gotcha <laughs> okay um so yes uh the, the everything that uh, andy said um that's something that we really need to dive into this storm specifically uh, Highway 62, west of Viola, strong winds coming your way, and we also have a little bit of rotation here. This is something that we're watching very closely. This is something that one or two frames for, from now, if this rotation gets any tighter, if it looks like we've got a little bit of a vortex on the uh, end of this uh, kind of storm that, that's rolling through, that might get tornado worn. So we're watching out in Viola and Salem. Regardless, of whether or not there's a tornado, that's going to be a really strong storm, and that's why you're under a considerable severe thunderstorm warning for 70 mile per hour winds. Um, uh, Carly, yes. The answer to your question is yes. Uh, let's see here. And we have an update from of where we are on tonight's severe weather threat. The time. Okay, uh, Ad Adeline, I hope I'm saying that right. We, we heard from Adeline in the last live stream um and it looks like we've got another update from her and uh, i'm honestly i'm very interested to hear uh what she has to say so this is adeline wx on x 
on Twitter. Man, that's going to get hard. <laughs> that's going to be hard to get used to. But let's see what, uh, what, what she's got for us today. Hi, everyone. This is Adeline coming to you live from Northwest Georgia. I'm just going to pop in and do a little bit of an update of where we are on tonight's severe weather threat. The timing that I'm expecting for these storms are 6 to 11 p.m. Everything is extremely uncertain. I've been looking at the models most of today, but models really can't tell you much when these storms are conditional and they're based off of convection. And if you can get those storms to pop up and how intense they're gonna be, all of this is still remaining relatively uncertain. But there's multiple storms popping up in Alabama currently that I think could be our MCS tonight. So I'm watching those closely. There is a couple, there's some spin on some of these, especially one south of Florence, Alabama currently. So I'm watching these and also these storms are all packing some hail in them, all remaining below quarter size, but still something to watch. I will be continuing updates this evening as my severe weather threat progresses. Okay, so Adeline, I, I didn't realize this was uh, from 6, 10 p.m. This is almost three hours ago, uh, but you nailed it, okay? Literally everything that you said, uh, like, that's exactly the, the way that it happened. Um, so far, up, up to this point, 100%, good to go. Um, and so thank you so much for tagging us in that. And, of course, we'll always have you uh, on if you are willing to share your thoughts with us. That's very cool. The future right there. Um. Uh, man, there's so much going on <laughs> on Twitter right now. I can't get to all of you, uh, but uh, I, I am very thankful that you guys are interacting with me. Remember, if you do send me a uh, report, uh, wind damage, hail, rain, whatever it is, also tag your local National Weather Service, okay? They need that stuff more than me. Um, we both need it, uh, but you might as well just go ahead and tag them in everything that you put me on on Twitter, okay? Uh, so let's hear from uh, Chandra, I believe, this time in the Y'all Squad. We'll go ahead, Chandra. Hey, y'all. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, we are about an hour away from Arkansas. Um, so far, the only thing we're chasing is daylight. So that's exciting. Um, and we are just kind of getting comfortable. We've been in here for quite some time now. Um, so we're just trying to get to an area that we can set up and be prepared for if anything was to happen. I did want to take this moment to um, remind you guys that the yallsquad.org is available. If you guys are willing and able to donate, um, that just helps us help people um, that are impacted by all the storms and we want to be able to show up as quickly and efficiently as possible so anything that you guys can do to help just helps us help others so that's all okay thank you very much andra and uh, keep us updated on if anything comes up uh, once again guys if you're just now tuning in chandra is in the y'all squad mobile chandra is the secretary of the y'all squad uh, she's in the vehicle with the uh, field production director, the general technician, um, and the uh, whatever Riley is for the y'all squad. <laughs> and they are all ready um, uh, to uh, help, you know, if, if needed. Uh, and this is something new that we've never done before. And we're really proud of being able to be to do this. Um, uh, and hopefully we don't need to see it in action tonight. But if you do, you'll see why. Uh, where it's such a big deal um, having these guys and, and like all of our resources right there next to where the storms are happening. So just in case a worst case scenario comes to fruition and we get a tornado that hits a town, immediately the y'all squad and all the funds uh, that we have are able to go into use. Like Obviously, we've always got our storm chasers there, but there's usually a disconnect between you know, what's happening on the ground, management in our nonprofit, the, you know, who, where's the accountant, who's got the card, who's got the license, who's got the connection with Lowe's, Home Depot. They're all in that car now. And it's just, it's going to be so much better and, and more efficient now that we're doing it this way. And of course, if they see a storm along the way, um, uh, they'll be able to show us that as well in through our state of the art, uh, storm chasing uh, setup in the, the Yalmobile as well. So very cool stuff. 
So uh, also, if you're just now tuning in, we've got a team of uh, very uh, good storm chasers out there helping us out. I, I, I don't know if we've seen a an update from Nick Gorman in quite some time, Carly. I don't know if we need to get a refresh on him. Also, the uh, stream from the, the Y'all Squad Mobile looks to have been uh, uh, frozen for quite some time. So, uh, But we do have uh, Zach Hall out there as well, Brad Arnold, Tim, Ryan Cardi. Uh, let's actually hear from Zach. I, it's been a while since we've talked to Zach. Zach, man, I don't know how long it's been since I've talked to you, but I can't wait to hear your voice, man. What's up today? And uh, just give us an update on what your plans are for the rest of this uh, storm chase, if you want to call it that. <laughs> See if uh, Zach gets back to us here. Buckle up, Little Rock. Melissa says it's going to be another fun night. Little Rock, yep, it does look like it's going to get pretty gnarly there at some point tonight. Might be really late tonight. Melissa Rose, thank you for that. Um, Lorne uh, says uh, flooding is a real threat uh, with these training sales. That's true. I'm going to go back to Alabama here in a second and talk more about that. Uh, Boston, thanks for being a member for 15 months. And Carol says, hello from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Carol, thank you so much for uh, the very generous contribution there. And Jonesboro, you are uh, probably just a couple hours away from getting in on some of these really, really strong uh, winds, getting ready to come down through Cherokee Village right now. Again, 70 mile an hour, uh, severe uh, thunderstorm warning there. We just got a report in of a 60 mile an hour wind gust near Mountain Home and also large tree limbs broken and shingles blown off uh, in the uh, northern side of town, Mountain Home. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's go back down here uh, in Alabama. Now, one of the things... Uh, one of the things to mention about these storms in Alabama specifically is the fact that uh, these were pretty much running on daylight. Uh, so as soon as the sun really goes down, which we're, we're getting there uh, right now, uh, the energy for these storms is also going to go down, and you're going to see these kind of fizzle out. Uh, so uh, the good news is, is there's not a whole lot more heavy rain uh, coming, but any sort of training that we do get, as even right now in downtown Birmingham over the next 30 minutes to an hour, we might see some flash flooding down here. And that's not the only place where this is happening. Uh, we've got already several flash flood warnings in effect right now through southern Missouri, now into portions of northern Arkansas. Uh, if you're in Green Forest, uh, Harrison, uh, Bull Shoals, oh man, I don't, I don't like the way that looks at all. Look at this. This area right here, you just got hit by a pretty strong storm, right? You see that bow echo moving off to the east? Now look behind you, look to your west. Okay, that right there is growing convection moving almost directly due east. So you've got warm, moist air blowing from the south to the north into the storms. They're getting sucked up into these updrafts. And then the 850 millibar jet stream is kind of flinging it all directly to the east. So it's kind of like a never-ending cycle. As the jet stream is going to take the, the fall-off or the overflow of those cloud tops and push them off to the east and there's always a clear area for new warm untouched inflow to come into the storm this is a the definition of a training situation that could lead to significant flash flooding so depending on how long this lasts and depending on whether or not this storm right here that's kind of punched into the uh the line there if that takes the whole thing to the south and east that might save us here but if we get this whole thing traveling over the same area. I expect to see very significant flash flooding over here near Bergman sometime soon. Ryan, are you trying to get a hold of me? Oh, there's Zach. Yeah, Zach, I was just uh, wanting to get an update from you. It's been a while since we've talked. Um, just wanted to hear what your plans are for the rest of the night. What do you think about the system? I know things aren't going as planned, uh, but yeah, just wanted to hear from you. Yeah, man, sorry, my phone's on, do not disturb. Uh, I'm on east, excuse me, I'm traveling east on Highway 412, northwest Arkansas. Really tough terrain to chase it, man. I love my home state, but it's tough to chase in the mountains. I'm gonna head east and see what I can find out of these storms. There's a lot of lightning, and uh, just try to see what we can salvage here before it gets too dark on me. 
Awesome. So there you go. There's an update from Zach. Uh, seriously, it's been a while since I've talked to uh, some of these guys. Um, and uh, here we are. It's August 9th, and we're doing a severe weather live coverage in Arkansas. I mean, that's something else. How about Tennessee tonight and tomorrow morning? We, we will take a look at that here soon. We will take a look at that here soon. Uh, as of right now, though, we do want to kind of focus on these storms that have uh, just now moved between uh, Missouri and Arkansas, now moving towards Cherokee Village. Every new scan uh, that we get from the radar here shows a more concerning uh, look to this uh, sort of Boeing segment of storms that's going to dive down to the south and east now. towards Jonesboro, Batesville, and potentially even Memphis much later tonight, okay? So that's kind of the highlight. That's the headline of what's going on out there right now. So once again, Cherokee Village, Lynn, Walnut Ridge, all the way down to Jonesboro, Y'all need to watch out. 70 mile per hour winds are on the way. Okay. Now, where are the naders? Where are the tornadoes? They ain't out here right now. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, we are watching this storm back here. Um, what we like to call the tail end Charlie on our little line of storms here. This could potentially try to, to rotate. Uh, we've got little storms out here trying to form in eastern Oklahoma. That's going to be able to rotate potentially um so we're we're watching and waiting but right now i don't see anything terribly concerning in the realm of tornado genesis uh which is good news okay uh, we are hoping that there are no tornadoes tonight uh but the reason we're here right now and you guys know how this works i don't go live <laughs> i don't go live unless there's a reason to go live and the reason we're live right now is because i promise y'all in the sky, there exists the ingredients to produce a tornado. Does that mean, and not just a tornado, but a big one, a bad one, does that mean that there's going to be one? No, okay, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't here right now just in case. Not every day that you have the potential for there to be a significant or maybe even a violent tornado. Um, so whenever those ingredients do come together, we show up, we, we cover everything we can, and we hope for the best. And tonight, we're, we're continuing to hope that we don't have to talk about any tornadoes whatsoever. They could happen. Uh, so that's why we're here. Uh, regardless of whether or not there's torna tornadoes, there's definitely going to be some problems with these damaging winds and flash flooding. So we're going to kind of continue to focus on that until the tornado problem presents itself. Birmingham getting pretty getting pretty missed by this storm once again the sun went down and these things started absolutely fading away um so that's good as well uh still got a severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile an hour winds all the way down here towards hoover and chelsea we get ready for that uh one of the storms that's not really dying out though is down here near new site in alabama Look at that, man. Another one that looks like it's producing a violent tornado uh, just from the radar, the reflectivity representation. Uh, but it's not. It's not. It's spinning up there, but not down close to the ground. And that's where the tornadoes happen, if you didn't know. No spin close enough to the ground today. Um, so, yeah. Looking through Twitter. I appreciate everybody who's went over there and sent something. Please remember to always um, tag your local National Weather Service as well when you send me stuff like this. Uh, this is from K Rose in Mountain Home. Wow, that's a loud one. K says, it's storming so bad it's knocking all my apples off, off the apple tree. Okay, thanks for sending that in. That's just one example of um, 
what's happening out there with some of these storms. Uh, and here's Weatherman Nick watching the Ryan Hall y'all stream tonight and the team. Thank you, Nick, for tuning in. Future meteorologist. You got to love that. That's a cool shirt. I like that. Yeah, lots of people sending in uh, stuff. I really do appreciate that. And, and I'm seeing a lot of it, uh, but if I don't see it, somebody on the team is seeing it. And if, uh, if we need to, if we need to show it or send that along to whoever else needs to see it, we will, I promise. Any DVD size hell tonight? Not tonight. Not tonight. Maybe some very large hell, but I don't think we're going to see any DVD sized hell tonight. Oh, yeah. Got to reset the crawl here. Give me a second. And uh, Andy, go ahead. Yeah, Ryan, while you're doing that, um, I'm looking at the Salem Ash Flat Storm from the Memphis radar. And over there, I, I do see an area that looks like rotation, but it's actually right in the middle of the hail core. And that means uh, uh, the hail in the storm can actually scatter the velocity. The velocity is a very, uh, I, I would say it's a very squishy variable, meaning it can be easily impacted and distorted by large objects in a storm like hail, for example. So um, I don't think that's legitimate uh, rotation that's showing up there, but it does look concerning. So if there is a tornado warning issued uh, by National Weather Service in Memphis or um, whoever has control over these counties, it's right on the border, I think, between uh, two weather forecast offices. If there is one issued, it would be a preventative tornado warning. This is what I like to call tornado warnings for storms that are very far away from a radar. We don't necessarily know what's happening at the surface, so we go ahead and say, hey, this could be uh, a capable of producing a tornado at the surface, given what we can see about two miles up in the storm. So if that happens, that's the reason why. Okay, thank you very much, uh, meteorologist Andy Hill, for the uh, insight there. Uh, the, this is the storm that he's talking about, getting ready to move into Cherokee Village. If we switch over to the velocity uh, from the Memphis radar, you can see right here uh, we do have what looks like uh, rotation, and very well could be. This is a problem, though, uh, with this area specifically. Uh, we are in a radar hole. If we zoom out on Radar Omega... And see where all the radars are okay so here's one here's one if we click any of these see the radar from that central area uh, and then there's a radius outside of that that you know each radar covers well the outside of the radius of each one of these um radar sites falls right in this area where our storm is right now so there is no really good uh, coverage close to a radar for, for these storms right now. We call that a radar hole, uh, and that's kind of what we're dealing with in Walnut Ridge, Cherokee Village, uh, all the way over here, closer to the boot heel of Missouri. Uh, and this has caused a tremendous amount of problems in this area. We've had who knows how many things happen out here that shouldn't have happened because of that very reason. Uh, so once again, just, just want to bring awareness to the radar holes. If anybody didn't know, you you pay taxes just as much as me to get access to radar, and for whatever reason, I can see a tornado on my radar, and you can't. I would be mad about that if I was you, and I would write to my senator or go down to the mayor or something, and I'd, I'd talk about that. Um, we've been trying to raise awareness and, and talk about this as much as possible, and I think that, I think that at least on some level, we've made a little bit of a, a noise. We've ruffled a, some feathers, but nothing incredible uh, has changed just yet it'll happen though we'll have radars everywhere uh is there any dangerous weather brewing in the pacific um there's some stuff happening in the pacific specifically uh over there around hawaii we might talk about that a little bit um uh, actually, this just popped up on here. This I don't know if you guys knew about this, but Lahaina, the 
one of the islands uh, in Hawaii, literally almost the whole island has like burned down. Um, and it's been like a really, really significant event. They've had to evacuate the island, which is obviously a very hard thing to do. Um, and that's, that, that's kind of like the main thing that's happened out there. We've got a couple tropical cyclones. Um, uh, Dora being one of them, uh, but the main thing that uh, you know I've had my eye on is Hawaii, and we might talk more about that here in a minute. All right, I'm just reading, reading some stuff on Twitter here. Hard to keep up with everything. Uh, we do have an update from uh, Chandra in the uh, Y'all Squad mobile. So uh, I'm going to pull up the Y'all Squad mobile uh, full, and you're good to go, Chandra. Go ahead. Ron, we had a question for you um, here in the Y'all mobile. Um, <laughs> what's a tornado's favorite game <laughs> i don't know what is it the way it started of what <laughs> i didn't hear you what you didn't hear me twister oh <laughs> <laughs> i swear i should have me <laughs> <laughs> you guys are uh getting um a little slap happy out there aren't you <laughs> Yeah, just a little bit. I'll come up with more later. What's your? Do you know what your plan is right now? Where, where's the y'all mobile headed? To We're still on. headed to Arkansas. Um, we're about fifty-two minutes away. That's a large place. Arkansas. So. Okay, so you're headed towards the Walnut Ridge area, correct? Do you Walnut know? Walnut Ridge. Oh, yeah. Riley wants to talk to you. Okay, let's hear you, right? Yeah, we're we're going to Walnut Ridge, which is right where they just issued that new severe thunderstorm warning. Um, this is like the only part of the line that actually looks somewhat interesting right now. I think the rest of it, it just going to pose a flash flood threat. Uh, we can actually see that they did just issue a large flash flood warning for that area, from Rogers to Mountain Home, all pretty much all of northern Arkansas. But our plan is to go to Walnut Ridge because it seems like, as far as the severe weather threat goes, that's where it's going to be the most elevated for at least the time being. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Y'all Mobile. Please uh, continue to uh, check in as uh, much as possible. That was that was enjoyable uh, comedic relief there with the tornado joke. <laughs> Um, uh, but once again, they are getting pretty close and Riley, if you can hear me, if you could open up your radar mega app so we can see your location here, they're getting pretty close to actually being able to intercept this line. So our y'all squad team today is going to act as one of our uh, storm chasers <laughs> essentially. Um, and there they are. That's where the y'all mobile is. They're going to continue to go this way and try to get of us a view of this storm. Now, this is a pretty dangerous storm. Uh, we don't want them driving in that uh, tonight, uh, but that's going to be 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. And of course, um, we also have the potential for some rotation there, maybe even uh, a, a tornadic uh, situation. Uh, and just to give you guys some context uh, around the y'all mobile and what's happening there, everybody walks into work here at the weather house this morning at 9 a.m. I say, Turn around. <laughs> SPC just issued a 10% hatched risk for tornadoes. We've got to try out the Y'all Mobile today. Um, and uh, they've been driving ever since. And now it's 9.32 p.m. So, um, yeah, that, they've been in the car for quite some time. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that's what's going on there. We really appreciate them, though, because that's going to be super useful um, if they're needed. So uh, go ahead, Andy. Hey Ryan, just watching that uh, that storm that uh, the Y'all Squad Mobile, speaking of, is heading towards, which is going to include the Walnut Ridge area, Ash Flat, and areas just south. 
if you watch back on the Memphis radar, which I believe is now just a little bit closer to it, um, you can actually see a new rear in or rear rear flank downdraft surge on it, and the new area of rotation is right near a uh, Franklin in Arkansas here. So that's just interesting. It's kind of taking on a supercellular uh, storm mode once again instead of uh, being in a line. So we've gone we flip flopped on storm mode here, and I think we're seeing another area of rotation uh, over the last ten minutes or so ramp up and push forward. Yes. Um, thank you very much, Andy. This is what he's uh, talking about right here. Uh, some rotation um, near Franklin. That is something that we're going to be watching very closely as this moves over towards places like Myron, Ash Flat, Center, uh, Smithville, and, and eventually Walnut Ridge. Uh, that's probably going to be the bigger place uh, that this is going to impact in the near future. Uh, but Outside of the rotation, the hail and the damaging winds are also going to be moving right into Cherokee Village and Highland here very soon. So if we've got anybody watching in Cherokee Village or Highland, get ready. That's going to be a very, very dangerous storm moving in um, very shortly. Uh, Charles says, when my kids are just ex just as excited to learn as I am, I call that a perfect life. I guess I need to plug in more monitors for them. That's awesome. That's very cool. Got the kids over there looking at uh, the radar. Uh, that is super, super awesome. That yeah, Charles, thank you for sending that in. And uh, let's see here. The town of Lahaina on Maui and some other spots got destroyed. Not the entire island. The big island has some fires too awful. Yeah, I, I had very little information on that. From what I understood, it's probably one of the bigger fires the island has seen. That's for sure. Uh, so it's not like a, the, a volcano erupted and the entire island is reduced to ash. But it is certainly a huge, uh, impactful uh, event over there in uh, Hawaii. Jacob, Jacob says Highway 63 and Walnut Ridge is a great place with lots of visibility to view storms. Message for the Yalmo building. Uh, Storm Chaser 575 says, uh, Ryan, I've been here for 16 months. I'm in Statesboro, Georgia. What do you think will happen tonight and tomorrow? I had a tornado come through last night with 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, tonight and tomorrow probably aren't going to be that bad for you, but these storms will move through all of Tennessee into northern Alabama and Georgia before they make their way into North Carolina and South Carolina tomorrow and probably blow up a little bit more. I did make a video right before I went live today. Um, I published a video that, where I talked about that a little bit more in depth. Uh, already uh, almost a million <laughs> of you guys have watched that video. Um, I posted it about three and a half hours ago, but it's called, uh, this is about the seriously alter our weather. The whole video is uh, a weekly outlook uh, for you know, the next week, and it all centers around this storm system that we're watching right now and how this little kink in the jet stream that is causing all this is going to change the weather for the rest of the week, and it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, some very interesting things are happening with the weather uh, over the next, I don't know, week, week and a half, which is a nice change of pace. <laughs> Obviously, we don't like terrible weather, but... You know, I like interesting weather sometimes. Um, so we'll see what happens with the, 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 the changing jet stream in the near future here. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy said it was a great video. Yeah, and we're, we're going to look at the forecast. I promise we're going to look at the forecast here in just a little bit. I just want to make sure we don't get a, uh, a tornado warning here. I don't want to be in the middle of trying to go through the, the forecast and something new happen with this. So I'm just kind of waiting. Uh, and while we wait, uh, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. We are just about to reach 1.5 million subscribers here on the Ryan Hall Y'all channel, which is absolutely nuts. 
It feels like just yesterday we hit a million. Uh, now we're almost at 1,500,000. So I know there's 5,000 of y'all watching probably that haven't hit the button yet. Go ahead and hit it. Get your mom, your brother over here. Have them subscribe too, and we'll hit that 1.5 in no time. The more people we have subscribed, the more people we can potentially reach with um, uh, notifications during live streams and stuff. Believe it or not, I don't advise this. This is not something that I designed. But believe it or not, sometimes people don't know <laughs> that there is a moderate risk of severe weather or a 10% hatched or there's anything going on in the weather world at all until they get that notification from our channel. It's just the way it works. Some people are, they found a way to look at the weather and that's the way they like to do it. And I personally think that you should probably monitor your local national weather service, get a NOAA weather radio and all that stuff. But the more people we can help, the better. Uh, just wondering when will Minnesota's next big storm be? Um, I, I'm not sure. Uh, there's definitely some chances for storms over the next little bit, like next week and a half, but nothing big, I would say. Why a national weather service when we have you? <laughs> uh, because you don't always have me. I'm one person. I can't be live 24 seven and the national weather service is. My goal is to be live here on YouTube um, during the big events. Uh, you know, we, we, there's a lot of resources that go into this. There's a lot of people that go into making it happen. And, um, you know, we're 10 to 20 times a year, maybe 30, we, we get a big hurricane, a big tornado outbreak, a big blizzard where we all come together and, and we do this production. And I believe that we have saved a lot of lives doing that. I've talked to the people that have benefited from it. Uh, it's, it's just unrealistic right now, maybe in the future, maybe if maybe one day, but right now, given our current set up and the way that all this works and the amount of resources that we have, it's unrealistic for us to go live during every thunderstorm. Um, but Hey, like we, we do every severe weather risk for the most part is thoroughly covered either here in a main channel video on the extra channel on TikTok, and YouTube shorts, something like that. We've got a lot of content going out. It's just not all live, but you know, what is live this This cut in from meteorologist Andy Hill. Go ahead, Andy. A classic, Ryan, truly. <laughs> uh, I've been watching the this one cell in particular. I'm scanning through everything else. And besides a little bit of a downburst going through the southern Birmingham metro right now, um, the most interesting thing to me is the, which also just got um, upgraded, I think, to a considerable warning. The most interesting thing to me is this uh, transition of storm mode from what looked sort of linear to now like a hybrid supercell near Ash Flat in Arkansas. And I think what further supports that is the fact that the hail threat uh, has ramped up recently right over Highway 62 uh, to the northwest of the town there. And so we've seen a, a lot larger of a hail signature here. I can back that up even though we're really far away from the radar because if you look at the correlation coefficient product, you can see... Uh, a beam filling occurring there where everything past the hail that's being scanned is uh, scattered around essentially. So it's being filled in with uh, non-legitimate values. So because of that uh, change into a supercell mode, I think that's why we're starting to see a lot more of this hail because the rotating updraft and the storm is uh, able to support a lot more of it and or larger hail as well. So that could be a near-term threat to Ash Flat, Sharp County, and Lawrence County in Arkansas. Um, and we could see an upgrade to the severe thunderstorm warning as a result. 
Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, Ashflat, get ready for some big time hail here as that uh, transition into a supercell uh, occurs. Center Cherokee Village, you guys are also right smack dab in the middle of where this is going. Um, our Y'all Squad Mobile is headed right towards where this is going as well. So, <laughs> y'all <laughs> get ready for that. Uh, there's definitely some big hail in this right now. Um, so just keep that in mind as you uh, approach the storm. Whole thing is uh, rotating here. The, 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 the rotation just likely isn't tight enough uh, right now to produce a tornado. Um, that could change, so that's why we're watching it so closely. Uh, but let's look at this huge flash flood warning that was issued here for this area. I just did a very long spiel about this and, and how important it is to watch this. And let me put this into motion. Let's see if there's any... There's, there's really nothing good happening here if you are anywhere near uh flipping bergman harrison norfolk anywhere south of mountain home back towards hole and green forest in arkansas uh, these storms are not moving anywhere in a hurry now that last push those last couple of frames you can see that the outflow from these storms might be kind of overtaking the inflow a little bit pushing some of that convection back into the 800 of our jet stream at a little bit of an angle that might help this uh, storm system progress to the south but the longer that west to east progression uh, happens with these cells moving over the same areas over and over again the more likely it is that this will end up being a very significant uh, flash flooding event um, not sure exactly what we've got right now uh, I guess I can find out for you. Some of these places have already gotten four inches of rain. Bergman looks like about two inches. Uh, so right in here between Ho and Bergman on Highway 62 near Francis, I would definitely be watching the creeks and streams out here as that looks like it's going to be uh, quite the, the gully washer getting ready to come through, adding insult to injury on top of the already significant rain totals that you've seen. You never want to see cells dancing over the same areas over and over again like that. That's never what you want to see. Interesting cell here moving in from Oklahoma into Arkansas. Not a lot of rotation with it or anything, but uh, interesting to say the least. Looks like uh, Storm Chaser Brett Adair uh, might be heading for that one. You can see him in the Radar Omega app. Uh, you can pull up, there's a lot of storm chasers on the Radar Omega app, by the way, uh, if you guys didn't know. Uh, Brad Arnold's on there, you can click on him, you can open him up and see what he's got going on, uh, as well as a lot of stationary cameras. So Jonesboro, and just south and east of Jonesboro, there's a nice uh, HD stationary camera that's on 24-7, you can look at that. There's a bunch of them in Tennessee. There, there's things that this app does that no other Radar app does, that's why I talk about it all the time, so. I'm sorry, you probably get tired of me talking about it, but I do think that it's super valuable for anybody who's interested in monitoring the weather. Tornado Watch goes until 3 a.m. Central. 3 a.m. Central. It's currently about 9 p.m. Central. 10 over here on the um, uh, East Coast. And... We've got a huge, uh, generous uh, gift from Wolfgamer12345 with the 20 Ryan Hall Y'all memberships. Wolfgamer, thank you so much for that. Uh, 20 people were just randomly selected to get access to the custom emotes, members only live streams, and all that good stuff uh, from Wolfgamer. So everybody say thank you. Pamela just became a member. Thank you so much, Pamela. I'd love the Y'all Squad Mobile in my Radar Omega. You know, that is a good idea. Radar Omega, if you're watching this right now, which I think you are, let's set that up. We definitely need the Y'all Squad Mobile to be in the Radar Omega app. That would be super cool. All right, so... Rotation here in our storm. 
is continuing to look more and more interesting. We've also got some little sales trying to pop up out in front of the main thing here. So Cherokee Village getting ready to get hit hard. Uh, I, Imboden, Ravidon Springs, Black Rock, and Walnut Ridge, you're next. Get ready. Yo, what's gonna happen in Little Rock? In Little Rock, right now, it's hard to tell. You're still under an enhanced risk for severe weather. There's still a very good chance that uh, you're gonna get hit by some sort of strong storm tonight. The main action is still well to your north right now. It could be way into the overnight hours or maybe even into the early morning uh, hours tomorrow before anything happens in Little Rock, but you, never, you, you need to be weather aware throughout the entire night, for sure. Name the y'all mobile the y'all force one. I think that's a good idea. You guys, you guys think that's a good idea? What about the people in the y'all mobile? What do you guys think about y'all force one? We can't hear them, but I think that they agreed. I think they liked it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're about to see potentially something here with our storm moving into Cherokee Village. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on, but it definitely looks more and more interesting uh, with every scan. Um. Go ahead, uh, Chandra. I'm going to pull you up full screen here. Uh, I think everybody agrees that Y'all Force One is the new name. Okay. All right. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. I like it. Y'all Force One it is, guys. Kind of over vehicle wraps. But we might take a um, a sharpie or something and write y'all force one on the side of the vehicle out there. All right, so let's touch on these storms one by one. First of all, we're watching a very dangerous storm move through Cherokee Village right now, down towards Jonesboro and Walnut Ridge. Uh, that's packing 60 mile an hour winds and 1.5 inch in diameter hail. We're seeing some significant flooding uh, ongoing here between Green Forest and Mountain Home in Arkansas. Pretty much all of Highway 62 is about to be underwater, it seems like, as these storms dance across this corridor from west to east. On the tail end of this line of storms, we have um, a couple of really... They're, they're trying to be stronger uh, sales, but they're they're struggling uh, near Fayetteville and Stillwell along the border of Arkansas and Oklahoma. Uh, those are going to continue to try to grow as they move east. Uh, and then way down here towards Dallas, actually, we've got a couple more uh, severe thunderstorm warnings. Um, and those storms are, for the most part, actually fizzling out right now. But Dallas, you are warned for 60 mile an hour winds, especially on the northern side of town there. So get ready for that. Down into Alabama, our crazy mesocyclone outbreak is ongoing, uh, but the storms are dying out quite a bit, okay? Um, and everywhere else right now, it's pretty, pretty mid. There, <laughs> there's nothing going on pretty much anywhere else. Now, the most interesting thing that's happening right now is definitely along the border of Missouri and uh, Arkansas. We're going to keep touching on Texas and Alabama throughout the night, but the reason I'm kind of hyper-focused on this area is because we do think that there's a tornado potential continuing here, as well as a hurricane force wind potential for a very large area here as these winds keep pushing down to the south and east.
Lots of lightning. Yeah, lots of lightning with these storms. It's hot outside, tons of humidity. You are going to get a light show and a half, uh, which we should start seeing that through the um, uh, the Y'all Squad, the Y'all Force One. Uh, they should start seeing that really soon if they're not already seeing lightning in the distance there. Hey, looky here. Um, Jeff, everybody say thanks to Jeff uh, for the very, very generous um, $100 super chat. It says, hey, Ryan, awesome to see your channel growing. Keep up the good work, donating to a great cause. Jeff, thank you so much for that. Jeff, you've been around for a while. I remember you seeing you here before, um, multiple times, actually. Uh, yeah, thank you for the support. Thank you. Michelle says we should call it Nader Chaser. Love that. I do love that name. But I, I think it's important that we remember that the Yalt Force One is not specifically designed for chasing naders. It's for helping people hit by naders. It do, it's, but it's got all the live streaming capability of a, that a storm chasing vehicle should. So that's, that's good. Lots of love for Jeff in the chat. Thank you, guys. As we continue to analyze the storm coming into northeastern Arkansas, you can see it starts, it's starting to look like it has more of some supercellular characteristics. There's something that looks maybe a little bit like a hook here. You can see the forward flanking uh, downdraft coming down towards Imboden. Um, but there's this huge area on the rear flank um, that's probably going to try to make this outflow dominant here. Um, so either way we go, tornado, no tornado, this is going to cause some big time problems with wind. <laughs> Tornado wind, straight line wind. Uh, when it's dark outside, sometimes you can't really tell the difference. So I would be uh, getting ready to take shelter in Black Rock, Walnut Ridge, and all these places just in case. Yeah, uh, Riley, just find somewhere with a good view with, that, with good lighting um, and just park and, and let the storm hit you. Definitely do not drive in it, though. Um, wait until the, the rain has calmed down significantly to get back on the road. Wow. Some crazy lightning in uh, Brad Arnold's stream. This is the kind of stuff um, I think we're going to see through Y'all Force One here soon. So Brad actually got hit by this storm way up towards uh, West Plains there. Pretty strong storm. We actually did see a funnel cloud through Brad's stream. No tornado, though. Now he's headed back south. And Brad drove all the way from Alabama for this today. True storm chaser through and through. Is it still considered a squall line if it's more horizontal than vertical? Um, so it, you're going to consider this a squall line whenever it starts moving in one direction. Whenever the storm as a whole is moving in one general direction. Right now, the, the head of the storm is moving pretty much due east, and that's the part that's moving towards Walnut Ridge. And then there's like this tail behind it. And basically what that is is it's not necessarily just one line of storms. And even in a squall line, it, it's technically not one big storm. 
what you've got is a collection of a bunch of small storms where the top of the updrafts, the top of the storms, they're all kind of mixed together up there once the, you know, the, they've gotten so far up. Um, but you can see that really clearly uh, if you look at the radar right now. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, separate uh, updrafts here, all fueling what we call uh, a line uh, of storms right here. Got an updraft here, 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 here. These are the bases of the storms, and they're just kind of throwing all that moisture up and out into the upper levels of the atmosphere, and it makes what seems like one giant storm. Uh, but the reason this is concerning hey, right Ryan, now... Brad, uh, dropping south right now to the storm that is uh, the severe one storm in Arkansas, headed towards Jonesboro. Uh, we're going to follow that all the way back into western Tennessee down to Memphis. Um, but it's the only show, it's the only game in town, so uh, we're going to drop down south. It is. It definitely has a pretty good lightning display with it, um, and it's severe. Uh, tornado potential is still a question mark, but we'll see. Um, Got to get through the Corbett. Uh, it's going to get wild here about 10, 15 minutes or so. All right, sounds good. Definitely a crazy lightning show there, and, and we're enjoying it. Be careful. Uh, probably around Walnut Ridge or somewhere near there, you're going to run into or, or pass the Y'all Force One. So if you guys see each other, here you wave. <clears throat> Y'all Force, I don't need, I don't think Brad even knows about Y'all Force One yet. <laughs> Back here behind uh, Cherokee Village, we do have a report of widespread power outages. Y'all Force One? That's, that's a new one. I'm not sure. Who, who is uh, Y'all Force One? Y'all Force One contains uh, <laughs> a collection of some of the finest uh, weather uh, community uh, sp specimen. <laughs> I don't, we've got Riley Dibble in there. Uh, we've got uh, Chandra. And we've got uh, Kyle. I don't know if you've met Kyle before or not. Uh, but they're, you know, they're out there in the, in the Y'all Force One. You'll see it. When you see it, you'll see it. <laughs> All right, tell him to get to haul guy me as, as I'm driving by. It sounds like you got the All Star Squad in that group. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, I wouldn't in light rain, but in anything less than light rain, I would be okay with it. Uh, sorry, if you're just now tuning in, we're... We're waiting on um, this, this storm right here to kind of get closer to Walnut Ridge. Uh, Y'all Force One, you can see their live feed above my head there. Um, they're going to try to intercept this storm near Walnut Ridge. They're not going to drive in it. They're just going to park, let it hit them, um, just so we can show you what it's going to be like as this continues, probably all the way down towards Memphis. Uh, and then I, I guess probably similar to what Brad's doing right now, whenever the rain kind of dies down a little bit, they will probably follow the storm down towards Memphis. And I, I don't know, though. That, that's up to you guys, but that wouldn't be a bad idea. The, uh, the light show and all that stuff. The Y'all Stars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, currently we have no tornado warnings. In fact, this. This might be, and, and there's still a chance that this could change, but this might be the first ever Ryan Hall Y'all live stream with no tornado warnings outside of like snow coverage. But that could definitely change with the storm here. Um, but yeah, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, and even if we don't get a tornado warning, I could show you another really interesting and atypical warning, and it's down in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro. 
So yeah, we are thinking about you guys down there. Look at the warning just north of Dallas. That is a severe thunderstorm warning for an outflow boundary or a gust front. Literally, the gust front from previous storms is so strong that it actually has severe criteria gusts, even if there's no rain associated with it, even if there's no lightning associated with it. It still has a severe thunderstorm warning on it for uh, areas just north of Dallas. And I think the same is also going to be true if the rest of the heavy rain near Jacksboro in Texas fizzles out as well. So two uh, severe thunderstorm warnings for a, an outflow boundary or literally the cold outflow from storms that hits the ground and spreads out. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, that's um, you don't see that very often. The, uh, the storm uh, that prompted this uh, outflow is way up here and just the, uh, the leftover wind, uh, the, the, the gust uh, that, that's coming out from underneath the storm is what's prompting the, the warning here. So very cool. And thank you very much, Andy, for drawing our attention uh, to that. Uh, and it sounds like we've got an update from Y'all Force One. Uh, so go ahead, Riley. Hey, Ryan. Uh, we are getting close to the storm near Walnut Grove, and that we have been seeing the lightning for a little bit now. Now, the one thing I am noting is there is an overall uptick in lightning, so it does appear the storm would be strengthening now. Also looking at reflectivity, it looks like we're starting to see um, an increase in reflectivity. So as long as starting to pose a larger wind threat as it picks up more forward motion, it also seems like it's starting to pose a much larger hail threat as well. Uh, our plan here is to find a open parking lot, probably somewhere near Walnut Ridge that's near a gas station. And that way, if we do end up seeing hail with the storm, we'll be able to park under the gas station to protect the car. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Riley, uh, for the update uh, from Y'all Force One there. Giant sunroof, giant glass sunroof on top of Y'all Force One, something that we have yet to replace or fix. But we do have to be concerned about the, the hail. It's new. It's a work in progress, okay? We, we're, we've been welding stuff and tacking stuff and drilling stuff and cutting stuff. It's going to be hail-proof eventually. It's just not yet right now. Uh, so here's the the location of y'all force one they are uh in uh, going this direction moving towards walnut ridge here's our massive storm going this direction they're going to meet up right in the middle there and we got um another incredibly generous super chat from tarian lloyd wow 200 dollars. thank you thank you so much uh, for that, um, says I can't thank uh, all of you enough for what you do to help families who are impacted by severe weather. I mentioned uh, why follow the Weather Channel when we have you, and you all do such a phenomenal job of coverage, and you've helped so many people. Thank you, Ryan Hall, y'all stars. That's so cool, Darian. Thank you so much. I uh, we really do appreciate that. Uh, wasn't for people like you, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of stuff that we do here. Including the what the what the y'all squad does. Um, so thank you so much. <sighs> yeah, if you want to make a direct uh, contribution to the y'all squad, best way to do that is also through uh, www.theyallsquad.org. We're an official five hundred one c non profit organization. Lots of paperwork to make that happen. You got the, the whole government involved and everything, but it, it's, it's good because it's, it's official. And um, it makes everything uh, better. Virginia says, so excited to see you live. Is that crazy or what? It is crazy. It's been a while. I'm excited to be live. I'm glad we're not covering uh, like tornadoes right now, but at the same time, I think uh, I forgot what it's like to cover tornadoes. It's been a second. Uh, and we got an update from uh, the Y'all Mobile once, oh, I'm sorry, Y'all Force One once again. Pull you guys up full screen. Go ahead, Riley. 
Hey Ryan, just another update as I'm watching this line more. Uh, I know earlier we were talking about the um, flooding potential with this. Uh, the one positive thing that I am seeing is it does look like the cold front is starting to move more north to south. So this is starting to push our storms further south and they're no longer training like we once saw them. If you play the radar loop, you will see that. But the other thing that's going to cause, that's going to cause more of a damaging wind threat now that our storms are moving faster. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, Riley, for drawing my attention to that. We're going to take a look at that right here in a second. But also, uh, they actually just issued a new severe thunderstorm warning for the storm that you guys are getting ready to intercept, Riley. Walnut Ridge is now under a considerable severe thunderstorm warning uh, with 70 mile per hour winds uh, and one inch in diameter hail. So uh, that's going to be for the next 37 minutes and probably within the next seven minutes or so, you will be in the official perimeter uh, of that warning. And let's go back a little bit and take a look at the more southward progression of our storms here. You can see, yeah, just in the past, I don't know, couple of frames, there's a massive uh, movement now of these storms trying to go south, okay? The, the lock that was in place where these updrafts were just kind of throwing moisture up into the same spot in the sky and the uh, 850 millibar uh, jet stream was kind of taking care of everything from there. That lock has been unleashed, okay, as the uh, outflow has kind of creeped out into some of the more warm, moist, untapped air to the south. This is going to continue to happen. And continue to happen new storms are going to form in front of each other in front of each other in front of each other this is going to kind of bow out uh, and continue to go to the south once again increasing the chance of damaging winds um, like riley said so yeah considerable severe thunderstorm warning for walnut ridge Um, are you guys seeing much in the way of uh, lightning there in y'all force one? I'm not seeing it through the camera very much. I, maybe we need to get a, a more lightning sensitive uh, camera. I don't know what it is. Looks like you're just driving into deep space. It most definitely feels like we're driving into deep space. <laughs> um, I also want to comment that y'all force one um, goes hand in hand with the state of the y'all. So I think that's funny. Yeah. Um, but we have switched trajections, trajectory, you know, tomato, tomato. Um, we are now going south, right? Are we going south? Uh, yeah, we're going south towards Sedwick. The reasoning behind that is, I think, well, the direction we were going to Walnut Grove, we were going to kind of just catch the storm in a weird place. Uh, if we go south towards Sedwick, we can position ahead of the storm more and show that storm as it comes in instead of catching it on the back to the side, like the back and the side. I don't know, the motion of the storm is really weird. But I just think if we go here, it's a little bit further to the south, a little bit further towards where the actual structure of the storm would be. And this is going to be the best view for the stream. Absolutely. That sounds good to me. Uh, Y'all Force One is now moving southwest towards Sedgwick. Um, it's still going to be right there in that considerable severe thunderstorm uh, warning here before too long. Uh, somebody just asked in chat if I can go look at these updrafts in 3D. And y you know what? I can <laughs> because I have Radar Omega. All right, so we're going to switch to 3D here. And watch. Boom. There you go. Now you can see them all individually there. And basically what this does, especially with just your base reflectivity, is this takes the, uh, the decibel uh, reading, you know, how strong, how bright those colors are, and it puts them on a graph and, and you know, makes the darker, brighter colors taller uh, than other uh, parts of the storm. But that's actually a really good way to uh, visualize where the strongest parts of the storm are, where the more dense part of the storms are. And you can actually see, you know, uh, each of the bases of the updrafts here um, for these storms as well. So very cool.
stuff you can do there uh, in the Radar Omega app. Once again, going once, going twice. If you don't have the Radar Omega app, you can get it on your phone, iOS or Android. There's a link in the description. It costs a couple dollars. Okay, a lot of people get all mad about that. But hey, sometimes the good stuff costs a couple dollars. I don't know what to tell you. It's like eight or nine bucks, something like that. One time. There are certain features that you can unlock uh, for a uh, monthly subscription. But the basic stuff, what I'm looking at right here, velocity, uh, live storm chasers, all that stuff, more than you get with any other app one time. Yeah, multiple flash flood warnings are in effect right now, but it does look like the training is going to stop here soon. We're going to see more of a north to south progression of these storms. Uh, Nova Girl says, do you also use a personal weather station? Uh, yes, I do. I am what you would call a personal weather station enthusiast. I have multiple. Uh, Teresa Larson, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Anime North America has been a member for 26 months. Wow. Says, uh, Ryan, I hope your evening's been going well. Thanks again to the whole team for the great coverage. Um, thank you for being a member for so long. Um, Mandy, thanks for becoming a slight risker. Brianna says, thanks for keeping us all informed and educa educated. Hashtag now casting. Um, Hippies Hive says, important. There's not a safe place for them to take cover in Sedgwick. Is there no gas station or anything in Sedgwick? Well, that is, <laughs> that is a <laughs> very small area. Uh, we've got the uh, United Methodist Church. Community center, a volunteer fire department, and a liquor store. Hmm. Well, they'll be approaching, they'll be close to Bono where there's quite a bit of stuff, just a little bit farther to the south and east. Thanks for that, though. They can hear me, and, and they're monitoring the chat, so. Um, oh, and there you go. We've got an update from them. Go ahead, Y'all's Force One. Hey Ryan, uh, I know there's been a few concerns about how far over I am in the camera. We can't really fix that, but uh, I'm here. Uh, there is a new mesoscale discussion out from the SPC. It's highlighting uh, this storm that we're seeing as the main risk for today. Um, they say it will provoke, it'll pose a risk for a severe wind and perhaps a tornado or two. So it does seem like the other storms aren't going to perform as expected today, but this one is still going to be significant severe storm that we were expecting uh so this storm is probably going to track through jonesboro down towards memphis like we said earlier 
And I honestly see this becoming a really, really concerning win producer or like we see with the MCSs. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Riley and Y'all Force One, giving us an update on what they're doing and what they think is going to happen next. I, I agree, this storm's going to ride the um, Highway 63 corridor down through Jonesboro and then likely down towards uh, I-55, towards Memphis. So we'll be following along the whole time here. Buckle in. Y'all, y'all after dark. Son, <laughs> we'll be going to at least midnight here. So we'll get you through this uh, in Memphis as the storm uh, continues to move your way. Y'all after dark. <laughs> You never, this is new exclusive content. You've never seen, <laughs> you've never seen y'all like this before. Oh boy. Okay. What do we got here? Another super, super generous super chat from Sorrel, $100. Everybody say thank you. Uh, says, uh, would love to be a meteorologist except for all the math. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. The math, the math is uh, obviously a, an important part, but sometimes, sometimes it it doesn't help a whole lot. <laughs> it we're not deep enough into uh, y'all after dark yet to start talking about that, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, anybody who's, uh, I know we got a lot of youngsters watching. Anybody who's interested in I'll just don't be uh, afraid of the math. I'm sure Andy can talk about that some too um, uh, if, if he wants to chime in. But um, I agree. I'm not a huge fan of math myself. We do have a um, update from Y'all Force One. Go ahead. Hey, Ryan. So I was thinking we'd ask chat here because there's not much else going on. Uh, we have two options with this storm. One, we can stay ahead of it on the highway. Or number two, we can park uh, and let it overtake us. Uh, what do you think? What chat? What do you want, chat? Let us know. So uh, Y'all Force One does have the ability to show us a video feed out the rear glass we've got a camera that points out the back so if we do get right in front of the storm and just try to stay ahead of it a little bit uh we'll continue to see the lightning but that you know also we uh, there is we can just let it hit them um and then it'll be over bef before you know it and then they can just kind of drive back in the drizzle that follows behind Oh, I'm seeing half and half. I think we need a poll. I think we need a poll. We're doing a poll. I'm making it. I'm making the poll. What should y'all force one do? Park and get hit by the storm <laughs> or stay ahead of the storm until it gets bigger. <laughs> okay, the poll is live. And remember, safety first. That's what we're aiming for here. These the the, the Y'all Force One is not a storm chasing mobile. Okay, these people are important. The, the the resources, the, the everything that we have in there, we, we, we don't want to be, we're not storm chasing today. We're either just getting hit by the storm or we're parking or we're staying in front of it. And it looks to me like staying ahead of it until it gets bigger is winning right now. It's tight though. We've already got 2,000 votes, 2,000 votes, 54% say stay ahead of it until it gets bigger, 46% say park and get hit by the storm. We will make a final call either 
in the next five minutes or whenever we get to 5,000 votes. If you want your voice heard, you got to vote now. Oh, we're about to hit 3,000 votes. And staying ahead of the storm until it gets bigger is pulling ahead big time, Bulls. Looks to me like we've got a clear winner coming up. 60% stay ahead of it until it gets bigger. And I don't mind that. I don't think that's a terrible idea. Um, you could at least go, Riley, if you're listening to me, uh, you guys could at least go to the next town, Bono. And there's definitely a gas station or like a Walmart around there. Um, so it's up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, our plan is to just get on 63 and stay ahead of this until uh, we see that it would be extremely interesting to intercept. Uh, whenever we do intercept, we're going to make sure we do it in a safe location because this definitely is a dangerous storm. It has a history of producing winds uh, around 70 miles an hour. And obviously, safety comes first, but our plan is to just go on on 63 and stay ahead of this and turn on that rear view camera for you. Amazing. Um, uh, Andy, or if you're still around, I, I've got to go get myself a bottle of water and hydrate. Do, do you got five seconds to fill the void here while I do that? Yeah, right. I'm just eating a bowl of spaghetti right now. <laughs> Okay, I'll I'll be quick. Give me one second. All right, guys. I'm still watching the storms in the Alabama, western Georgia vicinity as well. Currently, a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings over there, uh, but nothing tornadic still. If you've just joined us in the last little while, we haven't talked about those often today uh, because there is no low-level shear in place there, with literally how the winds change in the first you know half a mile above your head if you're over here in uh, eastern Alabama or western Georgia near uh, Columbus, Georgia, Phoenix City area. <clears throat> so that's where the layer of the atmosphere where we need to see those changing winds, those um, cur curving winds with height to get naders. But uh, I just had uh, I just had a meteorologist send in a picture from the North Alabama chase they did uh, where there have been supercells that look the part on radar but don't necessarily have that tornado attached to them. And I, I mean, the structure is absolutely brilliant. So some people might have seen some of those uh, scary wall clouds, scary looking clouds in uh, those areas. If you were in um, North Alabama and you saw those earlier today, they were non-tornadic for the most part. The tornado threat with them was very low, despite their ominous appearance uh, from what has been sent in. Um, thanks, uh, Brian Wilson, for that. Um, very good stuff. So that's what I've been uh, looking at. So don't worry, we're not leaving you guys out. If we're not talking about your area as it stands, then uh, chances are good our focus is uh, elsewhere. So it is good to see you all. Glad you're still uh, tuning in today, despite not having a single tornado warning during the stream. Uh, we had uh, one earlier today, I believe, in northeast Mississippi. I'm pretty sure that's where that was. Um, but that was a, a long time ago with the first round of storms that's passed through. The theme has been the second round of storms uh, that were expected to pose more of a tornado threat into the evening hours and the early night where we are now. That has not uh, panned out for the most part. But uh, that doesn't mean it's over for the Memphis area, for the Jonesboro, Arkansas area. We're still watching if the that essentially that leading edge of the storm that the y'all squad uh, one is getting ready to intercept if that becomes more established as a proper um, MCS or a mesoscale convective system and that uh, has the chance to produce spin up tornadoes that will uh, become our next focus. Uh, so that's what I'm watching out for, Ryan. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Um you uh for your insight as always and this blue dot is where y'all force one is right now uh and you can see very clearly that the storm is uh, approaching them very quickly uh, i think they're going to make it down here to this town now somebody on twitter said that they were triggered um somebody said my arkansas girlfriend is triggered that you mispronounced bono i don't know how else you'd say that i mean not the biggest U2 fan, but that's the only other time I've heard, I've seen that word. 
<laughs> so how, what do you what do you guys say there in uh, Arkansas? Teach me, teach me your ways, and I'll never mess up again. I promise. Bono, Bono, okay, <laughs> Bono. I like that better, anyways. I like it. Uh, Chastity Woodmore says, thanks for all y'all do. My four kids, mom and myself escaped about 10 minutes before our home and neighborhood was destroyed in Bowling Green, Kentucky on uh, December 11th, 2021. There was 14 people killed on our street. The volunteers were amazing. Thanks for all the hard work. Um, wow. Chastity, uh, thanks for sharing that. And thank you for the, the very generous, um, Super chat there. You didn't have to do that. Bono. I got it. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, here's a tweet from Taylor in Imboden in um, uh, Arkansas. The lightning is crazy. This is north. This is the north facing window. I didn't get the boom of the last flash because I backed away from the window and stopped the video. It was really close. Wow. Oh my goodness. That is a very intense electric storm there. Um, and that's the same storm that y'all force one is getting ready to uh, intercept. And it's also the same exact storm that Brad Arnold is behind right now. Uh, Ryan is playing baseball with hailstones a good idea. No, I think that's a great idea. Wear a helmet. Oh, and there is a new tornado watch. New tornado watch and guess what town it includes. Guess what town it includes. Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee, we've now got 2.4 million people under a tornado watch until 4 a.m. Central. Uh, a couple tornadoes possible, scattered hail up to ping pong size possible, and scattered wind gusts up to 75 miles per hour likely. Ripley, Jackson, Savannah, all the way down into Tupelo, Mississippi is going to be included in that, and they're specifically issuing this tornado watch for this storm, for this uh, part of the line here going to continue to do this number all the way down into Memphis like that by 4 a.m. And the reason I'm not showing you the models, we're not looking at the HRRR or anything like that right now is because, guys, they're literal trash in August. We, we don't look at convective al allowing models. <laughs> In August, it's a new rule that I've made for myself. Just know we're we're now casting. We're not forecasting right now. Just know that it's going to do something that looks a little bit like this. I would assume. I would assume that. Seven, it's probably going to be about two two thirty. AM before this gets to Memphis. Oh, not 2:30. Maybe um around um 12:30. A new tornado to one. watch has been issued. Maybe even sooner than that. Once this really starts bowing out, it's probably going to speed up quite a bit. So we could see 11:30 uh, 12 uh, Memphis arrival time. Uh we got an update I think from the um the y'all mobile. Uh, I think everybody just Ran out of the vehicle though, so I don't... hey, am I okay. Unmuted? Yeah, what's up? All right, hey Ryan, uh, we're parked here. Um, we are going to sit here, and my plan 
I guess our plan as of now is to let this storm make its way towards us. And then right before it gets here, right as it starts to rain, we'll start heading further down the road so we can still stay ahead of it. But um, I'm standing outside right now. I believe we're going to start getting the camera set up to actually have a live camera out here in the parking lot here in a second. But the lightning activity on this storm is crazy. And you're definitely or we're definitely starting to see um, a shelf cloud that's coming our way. So the storm's definitely a strong one. Uh, if you look at the RTMP feed from the Suburban, we're actually out the right side of the car right now. So I think you can see me standing. Yes. But you can kind of start to see the edge of that cloud moving in. And hopefully the camera is doing a good enough job of picking up the lightning, but it's crazy. Yeah, we can see the lightning um, and we can see you. Yeah, that everything looks great. The if we can do the handheld cam uh, for the next uh, as live, that'd be better because your your mouth's not synced up with the audio. But uh, yeah, everything uh, is looking good, and we can definitely see. I, I can actually see a little bit of the shelf cloud there, um, uh, illuminated by the lightning. So large storm approaching uh, the uh, Bono area, which is where y'all Force One is right now. Near Jonesboro, and and by the way, they just extended the warning, so now we've got a considerable severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Jonesboro, Harrisonburg, Truman, and uh, Paragold in um, in Arkansas. Uh, go ahead, Andy. Yeah, Ryan, I'm watching the Walnut Ridge storm now. I think I need just one or two more frames of radar data, which are uh, coming in every two and a half minutes or so at this point from the Memphis radar. But right over Walnut Ridge is a little bit concerning there. I'm trying to diagnose if it's uh, contaminated by hail or not, and I think it's mostly legitimate as it stayed uh, semi-consistent over the last few minutes. So we could see a, a threat of a, a, a spin-up tornado there. Uh, if we decide, if the National Weather Service decides to issue a warning for that, that would be the reason why. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. Um, this is what he's talking about right here. Uh, some rotation right over or just to the south of Walnut Ridge. Um, so we're watching that very closely. This is definitely something that could happen in a situation like this. We'll get a spin-up tornado inside of the line or at the end of the 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 bow here so walnut ridge sedgwick sedgwick and all these places you need to be watching out regardless of whether or not we've got a tornado in there this is going to be a big storm it's really starting to show itself now as a mesoscale convective system with strong winds uh, you can really see that just through the radar now and, and you're probably starting to see the the lightning um, and all that, even as far south and east as Jonesboro now. Our guys, Y'all Force One, uh, they are just to the north and west of Jonesboro. They're about to take this storm head on. Probably one of the stronger parts uh, with the wind is going to hit right where they are. Yeah, definitely <laughs> still looks uh, pretty concerning there just to the east of Walnut Ridge now with our rotation. Um, wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw a tornado warning uh, come out with that. Let's see here, that's going to be right along Highway 412. Um, you know, if there is something going on there, uh, I would be watching out uh, near um, Whiskerville, Light, and Walnut Corner here in the next little bit. Go ahead, Andy. 
Yeah, Ryan, I was going to say, let's issue a y'all watch out for that. Definitely consistent uh, and ramping up in rotation. Would not be surprised at a tornado warning at all, as we've been talking about. And also, if you play back the last couple scans, you can see where exactly it is and its orientation as well. I think this is a spin-up type tornado because it's actually moving due east along the highway. Uh, if it were to produce one, that is. It's moving due east along the highway instead of southeast with the rest of the storm. What that tells me is that this storm is turning into a bow echo or is starting to uh, because it's being pushed south and east and on the north side of it that one is moving more with a northward component which means it's moving due east so i think that it's in the right spot to be a spin-up tornado should it produce one uh and thus i do think um it, a, a warning would be um warranted for this if the national weather service agrees yeah and y'all force one if you're listening great call going southwest <laughs> Uh, in terms of safety, uh, because this this area where this potential spin up tornado is about to happen or is currently happening is exactly where the Y'all Force One would be right now um, if they continued directly west. So, um, looks like we've got a we've got a drone view. Might have to mess with the exposure a little bit. I don't know if you guys can do that or not, but y'all force one, the y'all, the y'all copter is in the air right now. Uh, let's go over and look at that full screen. We've got the y'all drone up in the sky here, looking uh, up towards uh, Walnut Ridge. This is from um, uh, Jonesboro, but even you know with the exposure not necessarily optimal you can see very clearly uh the uh, the lightning there in the distance i think they're playing around with it though they're trying to figure it out um i believe yeah they're they're pointing this uh directly to the north and west right now and you can see the lights that you see there that's the town of bono uh, this is uh, in the in the air above uh y'all force one right now And uh, I, Andy and I are continuing to monitor the uh, the radar scans here with our area of concern near, near Walnut Ridge. And as soon as there's a significant update uh, for you, we will pass that on to you, I promise. Right now, let's watch the big time storm move into Bono and Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is a live view once again from a couple hundred feet above Y'all Force One. Big time electric activity going on there in the distance. Hey, Ryan, you hear me? Yes. All right, so just an update here from where we have the drone up. Uh, I was flying the drone and I got about 300 feet off the ground. And one of the things I noticed was that I was already in the clouds. Uh, so this means we have really low LCLs. And what that means for our tornado potential is the tornado doesn't have to come from that high up. It only has to travel 300 feet from the base of the storm in order to become a tornado. So if there is any sort of sign that we might have a spin up, uh, I'd be incredibly concerned that this could produce a tornado very quickly with not a lot of warning, just because it's not going to take a lot for that to become surface based and get to the ground. That makes sense. So that's if you missed that, you know, Riley uh, just told us that the helicopter only went up uh, about 300 feet off the ground before actually getting into the clouds. Um, and you know, once that shelf, once the front of the storm actually comes into play here, that that low level cloud base might actually be a little bit lower than that so not a much not much room uh between the clouds and the ground so any sort of uh uh you know horizontal uh, vorticity could be quickly flipped into vertical vorticity and boom you got yourself a spin up uh tornado and, and something like that 
potentially uh, is happening uh, up here to the east of Walnut Ridge. The rotation is quite a bit more broad now than it was earlier, but it's still notable and it's still something that I would be watching out for uh, if I'm in Whiskerville or Light or Faulknerville in Arkansas. That's a very serious, uh, potentially dangerous situation uh, unfolding there. Brad Arnold stuck in a traffic jam, or is his, uh, oh no, he's stuck in a traffic jam. Brad, you got any idea of what's going on in front of you? Not a clue. I can't see anything. I don't even see police lights or anything. I'm guessing probably a tree's down or something like that. Uh, trying to get east of Walnut Ridge, because it's, it's, it's starting to ramp up again uh, with some tight rotation over there, so. Um, hopefully we can get to moving here in just a little bit. Um, just a, another update from Y'all Force One. We've got the Y'all Copter uh, in the air down there near Bono, uh, south and east of Walnut Ridge. And the thing ended up in the clouds only uh, about 300 feet off the ground. So very, very low uh, cloud bases there, um, and we're starting to see signs of you know spin ups. I'm sure you see that uh, couplet uh, near Walnut Ridge there. So things are definitely getting interesting out there. Be careful and keep us updated. All right, copy that. Um, I'm going to try to find an alternate route if we don't start moving pretty soon. And Carly, in uh, the production room, we got to get something over that uh, in, in slot six. <laughs> We're causing a lot of confusion right now. <laughs> Memphis. Um, currently, uh, all I can tell you about Memphis is that this storm that uh, Y'all Force One is getting ready to intercept is the same storm that will eventually in impact Memphis, likely within the next hour and a half to two hours. Y'all Force One, can you hear me? I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but the uh, the Hero camera and Y'all Force One is on the wrong computer. It should be on the Zoom computer. We want to hear Chan. Uh, Ryan, another Radar Omega tool. If you know how fast the storm is moving, you can use the storm track to give ETAs to all the towns in the storm track. Yes, that is true.
If you're just now tuning in, we are awaiting the um, intercept of the considerable severe thunderstorm near Jonesboro, Arkansas right now. We've got our team, uh, y'all force one, uh, right? I mean, they're getting ready to get hit by it right now. I don't know what exactly is going on there. Um, with them, I'm sure we'll hear from them soon, but I would give it a couple of minutes maybe before things start getting wild where they are. Uh, Joe says, this is the best way to stay informed. We really enjoy watching and learning. Keep up the awesome job, Ryan. Joe, thank you so much for the very generous super chat. You didn't have to do that. I appreciate you so much. That's going to hear you now. Last time. Last test. I hear somebody. I hear somebody in y'all force one. Ryan, can you still hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Well, we just got the camera working, but we have to move now. Uh, we're about to get overtaken by the rain, and obviously we don't want to be standing outside with our expensive camera equipment in the rain. Uh, I'm going to switch the back camera here in a second once we get the trunk down. As we start moving away from this, you'll be able to see the monster field that we have coming over us right now. Oh my gosh, the wind I'd is say we crazy. Have wind at about 35 to 40 miles an hour east, and the strongest part of the storm is yet to get to us. Okay, so, um, yeah, the wind is already getting crazy there, and y'all force one. Uh, we've got you guys uh, full screen, uh, so, uh, yeah, just, uh, do we still have the, the camera on, or did we leave it in the back? It's in the back. Okay, all right, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, right now, I think I'm hearing you through the cab cabin microphone. But if y'all want to talk through the the duration of this, go ahead and turn on the uh, the handheld mic. We're the you are the star of the show right now. We've got nothing else to talk about really, <laughs> so we're we're on you full. Yeah, well, what, about the handheld mic. Right? No, we can use that mic. We just have to talk loud. We accidentally left the handheld mic in the back in the rust to get out. Here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. But uh, I think as long as we use the cab mic to talk loud, we should be good. Um, here comes the back camera. We're going to see if you can get a view of that shelf cloud in between in the lightning flashes. Unfortunately, the back window is pretty tinted, so it might be hard to see out of it. Worst comes to worst, I might just connect my phone to the RTMP server and stick it out the window. We'll see how this works first try. Um, our plan is to move down further and stage again for another intercept of the line. We'll put the drone up again, and hopefully this time we'll have our camera working so we can have a producer field recorder as well. That's going to be Chandra. Okay. Uh, we just left the town of Bono, I believe it was. I, if I pronounced that wrong, I'm sorry. But we're going to go closer to Jonesboro, stop again, and then pick him up and look at this thing. It does appear that it is strengthening. Okay, yeah, go ahead and point us out the front windshield so that we can at least uh just see some maybe some of the wind and stuff because we're really we can't see anything through the back um i think that's going to be more of a daylight thing uh so uh it, it just just in case uh we couldn't hear uh, riley completely there they the the microphone they've left in the back um uh what what's happening now is that they're uh, leaving bono and moving more south and east towards jonesboro and you can see the lightning uh, really well uh, through the front camera actually um and uh that's we're we're just going to kind of be sticking with them as they uh, continue to outrun the storm they're so literally right in front of it um, in a tornado? and guys you're yeah, still outside. unmuted um 
Uh, if you can uh, mute Zoom, just uh, let me know when you have another update. We're going to go back to the uh, uh, the radar here. So, the guys, that was a live look at Y'all Force One, which you can still see their uh, live feed above me. They are, let me show you this. <laughs> this is the incredibly strong storm, and this is where they are. So they're literally right in front of it. They're, if they were to stop on this road for 10 seconds, they would get overtaken by a wall of wind, hail, and rain, uh, which it does look like there's potentially some significant hail right there. Uh, near Bono, so uh, they're trying to stay in, in front of that. I don't know how much in front of it they'll be able to stay. Um, they might just need to find a, a really good uh, place to, to get overtaken by it, but um, hey, they, uh, we're <laughs> the ball's in their court. We're just following along at this point. Um, and uh, Andy uh, has an update for us. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Let's uh, start to dive into this storm and analyze it via radar perspective. Our initial uh, uh, rotation on the northern side has sort of broadened out, uh, become diffuse, meaning that it's probably not going to produce a tornado in the near term. I would not be surprised if later surveyed an EF0 uh, to the east of Walnut Ridge or something similar to that. Uh, that definitely did have the look to it, like it could have done something in terms of rotation at the surface. Now we have a proper uh, mesoscale convective system developing in process. Uh, this is no longer a supercell, but uh, now a Boeing line segment. The northern side, you can start to see it uh, curl around. It almost looks like the head of a shrimp, uh, and that would be where our um, book echo or our book vortex is. Book in vortex. There, <laughs> there you go. And uh, right in the middle, headed right towards Y'all Force One, is uh, from the Memphis radar, we can start to see the rear inflow jet developing in those uh, highest velocities right near Bono and Sedgwick. Uh, that's what's driving forward that center part of the storm the fastest. And that's why we're going to start to see it take on the shape of a bow, literally a bow and arrow, essentially. The arrow is the rear inflow jet driving it forward. And what that means, uh, what you should care about in all of that hodgepodge is that Jonesboro essentially is going to get some of the worst wind damage uh, that this storm is capable of producing, which is probably middle end given the considerable severe thunderstorm warning. So this is going to go right through Jonesboro. Um, if there is no, I'm not sure if there will be hail with it or not. If that isn't hail in those higher reflectivity values, that's extremely heavy rainfall, uh, laden with, uh, uh quite, uh, intense winds. So this is going to be a powerful storm for Jonesboro. Uh, please be ready for that in Craighead County. It's taken direct aim on you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, so the storm is also speeding up a little bit as it really bows out here on its approach to Jonesboro. My advice for y'all force one is to just the next gas station you see, just pull over and let it hit you. I don't think you're going to be able to outrun it. I think that, uh, better safe than sorry. Um, just get somewhere, uh, and just let us see what, what's going to happen here. Um, so, and, and by the way, these guys are really close to Jonesboro right now. You can see their uh, location right here. Um, and Riley, if you could flip on Radar Omega for me real quick so I can see your uh, location at. I believe they're going to be near the uh, junction here uh, along uh, Interstate uh, 55 near Dan Avenue. So that's around where the storm's going to overtake them. Just to the north of that is where some of the higher uh, reflectivities are. Uh, so places like Sterling Springs, uh, Buck Snort, Pleasant Grove, and uh, Brooklyn. Uh, these are some of the places where I think there, if there's going to be hail, uh, that's where you're going to see it. I'm ending our poll, by the way. Thank you to all the thousands of people who uh, voted. We had 8.7K <laughs> votes. They did decide to go ahead of it. Jonesboro, I'd say 15, 20 minutes before you get hit. Here's a look from Amanda from Jonesboro. You can see the low clouds in Jonesboro now. Thank you. Uh, oh, wow. Thank you, Amanda. Those are really low. That's creepy. Wow. <laughs> When you guys, when y'all force one, when you guys get closer to Jonesboro and you see some of the light pollution, uh, some of the neighborhoods and streetlights and stuff, the reflection of the low level clouds moving really quickly over that is kind of terrifying. 
All right. So here is a look at the radar once again, Jonesboro. You are under a considerable severe thunderstorm warning. We're expecting golf ball size hail and 70 mile per hour winds. Uh, people and animals outdoors will be injured. Okay, expect hail damage to roofs, sidings, windows, vehicles, and expect considerable tree damage. Wind damage is also likely to mobile homes, roofs, and outbuildings. Locations impacted include Jonesboro, Paragold, Truman, Harrisburg, Bono, Lake City, Bay, Brooklyn, Monette, and Crowley's Ridge. So, yeah, that is what we are dealing with right now. A classic mesoscale uh, convective system causing some crazy um, composites here on our velocity as it approaches Jonesboro. Buck snort. Yeah. The real name. <laughs> oh. I see we I think I feel like we've got a lot of people watching right now in Jonesboro. Um make sure you guys are getting into a relatively safe spot. You don't want to be near windows or anything like that during this. Uh, and we've got an update from y'all force one. Go ahead. I can't hear you. You're muted. Then turn left onto Burke okay, Avenue. Okay, I got you now. All right. Um, so just a heads up for everyone in Jonesboro, because I know we have a lot of viewers from there. This storm is, yeah, right here. This storm is packing very, very significant winds. I would not be surprised if we saw widespread power outages from this. We're turning around right now to give you a view of this thing as it's coming into Jones Pro. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that mic is working. I think we still got you through the cabin mic, um, but we did hear you. Uh, the storm's going to be uh, pretty intense as it moves into Jonesboro, and we're about to see uh, the extent of that uh, right now. It shouldn't be very long before the storm overtakes them here. They're at a gas station. Um, yeah, it's potentially uh, a situation where we're going to see 60 to 70 mile per hour winds here through y'all force one. So uh, they're going to face directly into the wind here and we're going to see uh, what happens. And uh, while we um, look at this, of course, it's been completely buttery smooth all day. As soon as the storm hits, it starts freezing up. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, so once again, if you're just now tuning in, let me actually switch to this here so you got more information. If you're just now tuning in, um, this is uh, uh, Y'all Force One, uh, our Y'all Squad vehicle in Jonesboro, Arkansas, um, uh, watching the approach of a severe thunderstorm into the area right now. And this is going to give us the ability to see um, if some of the uh, velocity readings that we're seeing through radar are transmitting to the ground. Sometimes what we see uh, through the radar is a little exaggerated. But we are already got milk crates flying around out there. I see that. And at any time, uh, anybody in the vehicle wants to chime in with anything you're seeing, that's, you've got the floor. Lots of lightning with this. And, and by the way, what you're watching here, this is the same storm system that is getting ready to affect uh, Otwell, Brooklyn, Lake City, uh, all the way down to Truman, and then eventually Memphis, Tennessee. This is going to travel quite some distance. Hey, Ryan, you hear me? Oh, yeah, I hear, you, I hear you great now. All right, yeah, so we accidentally had the wrong mic selected. Uh, we got that fixed now. Uh, you did see a milk crate flying across. I have no idea where that milk crate came from, but we're definitely throwing milk crates around, so if you have any milk crates outside, definitely watch out for those. Um, 
there is a lot of wind with this <laughs> storm. I would not be surprised if we saw maybe even right in front of us here, trees come down on the power lines. Okay, y'all be safe. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, once again, just to the north of Jonesboro. If you're in downtown Jonesboro, you're probably not seeing much of anything yet. But basically what you see through this camera is what you're going to see in downtown Jonesboro five minutes from now. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Heavy rain. This is still the very front edge of the storm. Let me quickly show you the radar. The blue dot is where our guys are. They're not even in the storm yet. Okay, so uh, give it a, a second here. See what happens. As some of the stronger winds move in. Just a quick reminder. Um, the the Yawl Force One is not a storm chasing vehicle. Th these guys aren't out there storm chasing today. They are in the region just in case the Yawl Squad needs to show up. And it so happens that they have came into contact with uh, a storm today. They're giving us a front row seat to it here. Beautiful, lossless quality on the stream, by the way, thanks to several satellites and antennas on top of this thing. Very hard to live stream weather. And I say that and it freezes up. <laughs> um, whoever's controlling the location, if we can get Jonesboro, Arkansas, instead of just Arkansas on the location, that would be helpful to the viewers. Yeah, so uh, once again, anybody that's just now tuning in, this is a live look from uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas on the front end of a very strong, severe thunderstorm uh, that is moving into the Jonesboro area right now. This has a history of producing um, one inch in diameter hail just a couple miles to the north and west of where these guys are right now in Bono, uh, a report that just came in of one inch in diameter hail. Just a couple miles north and west of that, we got an official re uh, report of 66 mile per hour winds and uh, widespread power outages and a tree down blocking roadways near Walnut Ridge, Arkansas. Um, so that's you know the core of this storm. Once that gets into where these guys are, that's what we're going to be dealing with here. Uh, so far, the winds definitely have been strong, but I don't think we've seen any sort of damage uh, from these winds just yet at least in the specific spot that y'all force one is sitting in here. But things are definitely picking up there. That's for sure. Uh, some of the areas that are, um, about to be impacted by this include Cary, Bay, Truman, uh, Lake City, and Monette. And just looking at the velocity again real quick, uh, some very strong winds moving into Jonesboro now. Um, also, uh, not seeing much in the way of rotation at all, so that's good. We can't rule out a spin-up tornado up and down this line right here, uh, but for the most part, it does look to me like uh, this is going to be... Um, Mostly a straight line damaging wind event and not necessarily a tornado uh, producer for now, anyway. Winds continuing to pick up here uh, uh, around y'all force one. Rain still heavy. Any hail yet? Uh, y'all force one. You guys seen any hailstones? Uh, we have not seen any hailstorms yet, although there was just a public report of a one inch hailstorm in Bono, which is just up the road from where we came. Yes. Yeah. I was looking at that. And, um, so I'd say within the next five minutes, you'll be in the same part of the storm that produced that there. The reflectivities are just a tad bit less impressive now that the storm's moving into Jonesboro. But I would say that, um, there's still some hail in there, uh, especially a little bit farther to the North. If you guys are up here near buck snort, Great town name, um, Bucksnort or uh, Brooklyn. Um, definitely more likely to see some hail up there. 
This is the storm that will eventually make it down to Memphis. Um, and this is the only storm really worth looking at right now. The only other severe warnings that we have are down here in Georgia. And we will, in Alabama, and we will keep you updated on those as those also have some hail with them. But for right now, uh, we're keeping an eye on Jonesboro. And I think we've got people watching scanner feeds and stuff just in case there's reports that come in. Hey Ryan, you hear me? Yes. We are getting pea-sized tail now. All right. So we've got hail moving into the northern side of Jonesboro. I would put it in drive, but we don't need to be. Yeah. I would just close the sun. Yeah, we've got hail moving into the northern side of Jonesboro now. Um, and so that pretty much confirms to me that if you're up here near Pleasant Grove or Farville, you're, you're probably seeing the larger hail. And that's going to be moving into Brooklyn very soon. A uh, considerable severe thunderstorm warning that it goes all the way down to Harrisburg and Truman continues for the next seven minutes. Uh, once again, the hazard is going to be for 70 mile per hour wind gusts and ping pong ball sized hail. Yeah, the lightning is nuts. Hey, Ryan, you hear me? Yep. All right, so it seems like the hail and wind is mostly through here for, or is through here for the most part. Um, we're going to start moving up the road slowly towards Brooklyn to see if we can see any uh, accumulated hail there. Okay, sounds good. Be careful. Uh, so the brunt of the storm, when the stronger part of the storm is moving just past where the uh, Yall Force 1 is now. Uh, so they're going to go up towards uh, Buck Snort a little bit and see if there's any uh, hail on the ground left over from the potentially uh, heavier hail that happened up in that region. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. I, I don't see any signs of significant damage or anything here near uh, uh, Jonesboro. Can't say that that's the case for everybody uh, in and around here. Obviously, these guys are in one small part of a very large storm. Um, but that is uh, good news. The next thing that we're going to look at here as we try to determine what's going to happen next is our uh, tower camera here near Truman, which, my goodness... <laughs> Wow, looks pretty ominous. Um, uh, there's 42, oh my, there's 42 of you guys watching this with me right now in the Radar Omega app. That's the storm that uh, Y'all Force One is in right now as it approaches Truman. Uh, this has an anemometer on it, so it'll tell us uh, exactly how fast the winds are at the surface when this storm comes through there. And that'll give us an idea of what's going to be happening near Marked Tree, Terrell, and Memphis later. Yeah, that is a <laughs> very ominous view there from the Truman camera on Radar Omega. If you guys have the Radar Omega app, just hit the little icon there near Truman and you'll be able to see this. There's 140 of you guys watching with me now. 150. Mark Morrison, thank you so much for becoming an official sponsor. That's huge. I appreciate you so much. Here's a live look at trash cans. <laughs> trash cans falling and loud thunder in Paragold. Oh my goodness, that is very loud. Wow. 
Hey Ryan, it's Brad. Um, I was lucky enough to find this area around that, uh, I guess it was a wreck, I'm not sure, is it a wreck or a uh, uh, down tree, but um, where is the uh, uh, infamous uh, Y'all Force 1 at? I'm coming through, uh, I guess north of Jonesboro right now, uh, Walnut Ridge or something like that, Walnut something. Uh, Brad, the infamous uh, Y'all Force One actually just got overtaken by the storm in Jonesboro. So they're in northern Jonesboro right now. Copy that. I'm en route to Jonesboro. Uh, uh, and, uh, I guess we'll leave it there. Okay, remember, um, only send uh, videos and stuff if you can do so safely. But a lot of you guys are, and I, I, I do appreciate it. I'm hoping that the vast majority of the strong winds uh, avoid the Jonesboro area. So far, it looks like that might be the case. But, of course, we haven't seen everything yet of what this storm's capable of. It has a history of producing damage uh, back there towards Walnut Ridge and Large Hail near Bono. It's likely going to continue to do that as it approaches Lake City in Leechville. Lake City. And it is 11.14 p.m. on the East Coast. We are, I don't know, how long have we been streaming? Not oh, very long, 8.39. Probably only about three hours. Um, but we, it's looking more and more likely that this might be the first ever Ryan Hall y'all live stream with no tornado warnings outside of snow coverage, of course. Which is a good thing, obviously. And in spite of the uh, quote-unquote bust, we are in very reachable... We, we are very close to 1.5 million subscribers here on the channel. If you could find it in your heart to hit the subscribe button right now, uh, we're less than 2,000 subscribers away. It's your aunts, your brothers, and your uncles to subscribe to. We'll, we will get there tonight. It helps us a lot. It's free. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The weather wife just gifted 50 Ryan Hall y'all memberships. Stephanie, that's my wife. <laughs> she just gifted 50 memberships. Congratulations to all the new members. <laughs> that's awesome. Everybody say thank you to the weather wife. And we've got an update from... The Y'all Force One, Y'all Force One. Go ahead, Y'all Force One. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, lightning is crazy right now, and so is the wind, and so is the rain. So, it's getting a little nervous out here. I'm getting a little nervous in the dark. 
Um, but I did want to give you an update. I did get word that 5,800 people are without power in Arkansas right now. So just want to let you know that. Okay. Where's the, um, where's the y'all force one heading? Are you, are you going to keep going past Jonesboro? Are you staying in Jonesboro? What what do you, what's the plan? Um, we're heading to Brooklyn. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Just, just, uh, wanted to know what direction you're, you're going in. Oh, just an update. Just then 8,000 without power. 8,000 without power. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, keep us updated. We're watching. So I, hi to Steph and, um, that was awesome, Steph. So I'm sure everybody thanks you. <laughs> yep. so stephanie has once again uh came in here and dumped 50 gifted uh, memberships in here she's done this before y'all um oh and 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 so one of the cool things about being a member is uh we're gonna do um uh, weather trivia soon okay and this is something that the weather wife has has organized uh, along with uh, meteorologist Andy Hill and uh, a couple other uh, meteorologists that work with us, um, it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome, and it's a it you know it's it's a members only perk. So you get to be an audience of that, or you can participate in it, whatever you want through the members uh, only live stream. So super huge shout out to all of our members, and super huge shout out to my wife for adding fifty of yens, and we have a giant trophy. We have a giant trophy. It's like two or three feet tall or something. If you win weather trivia, <laughs> we're going to ship you a giant trophy. Eight thousand people without power in Arkansas. Shout out to Bud Adkins for the five additional gifted memberships. Shout out to Kenzie for sending me this picture of our giant trophy so I can show you guys. Weather trivia night. Look at that beauty. The Weather Trivia Cup. Who's going to win? Next in line is Truman here. Let's take a look at the Truman camera through the Radar Omega app. <laughs> My goodness. The lightning is nuts. Uh, Ryan has an easier time with the hillbilly slash Midwest names rather than the Indian names. Yeah. Uh, prayers for everyone's safety. We're out of power. Uh, we were out of power for over four or five days. The power pole in our yard was broken. Jane, you're right. I do not do good with the Indian names um, when it comes to pronunciations. The lightning in Jonesboro is crazy. This is from Amanda again. The lightning in Truman right now is crazy too. This is in the Radar Omega app, a live view from Truman, Arkansas. 200 and something you guys watching with me right now. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, this storm does th pose a threat f for Blytheville. I would expect maybe up to 60 mile per hour wind gusts within the next 30 to 40 minutes. And it looks like it this the strongest part of the storm might actually miss Memphis to the north and and go more towards Blytheville, um, Os Osceola, Wilson, Covington, Ripley, Dyersburg, even maybe. Hmm. Got more storms popping up back behind our line here, adding potential problems for uh, flash flooding. And we'll have to watch these, especially the ones farther to the south, for a slight potential in more tornadic concerns. But the the tornado threat, for the most part, is... Diminishing quite quickly here. Osceola, gotcha. Yeah, we can take a look at some uh, forecast models for tomorrow's potential uh, storms. Um, but remember, we're going to take them with an incredible grain of salt because we are not forecasting today. We are now casting. Uh, Robin says, thank you for keeping us updated here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. You're my go-to for all things weather-related. We are now only 1,000 1, away from uh, 1.5 million subscribers, guys. Thank you. That, that, we've gained almost seven or 8,000 subscribers just during this stream. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. We can squeeze one more out. We can end on a W. Which we're not, um, we're not going to end uh, just yet. We're at least going to be going to midnight Eastern here. At least. W for the weatherman. Is it going east? Yes, the storm is going east towards Blytheville, Osceola, Luxora, uh, Wilson, and the northern Memphis area. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the southern extent of this. Is this going to continue to bow out and go towards Memphis? At Memphis, at some point, will get hit by some sort of storm. It's hard telling right now exactly 
what that entails. Hmm. Hmm. This is the most laid back, severe weather live stream I've ever been a part of. This almost feels unnatural. Don't get me wrong, strong, dangerous storms definitely are out there, but um, there's like one. Let's check in on the uh, the ones down here in Alabama because I do know we have a couple people out here watching. They still <laughs> these storms still look like they would be tornadic until you look at the velocities, um, and then you realize that they're not. Uh, that still potentially sixty mile an hour winds moving down towards Wind Creek Farms in Dadeville in Alabama, and also back here in Georgia south of Butler, we've got uh, potentially one inch in diameter hail there. Uh, there's Y'all Force One, that blue dot right there. You can see the storm has made it past them quite a bit now. And um, they're just going on north. <laughs> As a, Okay, so I'm saying Blytheville wrong. Um, it's Bluvial, Bluval, Bluval. <laughs> what? I'm not even going to try to say that right. I'm going to say it wrong on purpose. I'm just joking. I'll get the hang of it. What's crazy is this is a very common area for me to cover, so I'm surprised I haven't said that specific town name many times before. Blyvel. Blyvel. I mean, come on, y'all. You could have spelled it better than that. They did uh, warn this storm back here near Jasper, Arkansas, uh, for one inch in diameter hail and 60 mile per hour winds. These storms look pretty, um, uh, I, I wouldn't say dangerous per se, but they look juicy. Uh, these are the kinds of storms that once again, if they train over some of these areas that have already gotten a significant amount of rain will probably cause more problems in the form of runoff and more severe weather. So I am super happy uh, that we were able to um, test out the uh, Y'all Force One today. I think it was successful. We had the the Y'all Copter in the air. Uh, we you know uh, we did some as lives. We did some live reporting. We got all kinds of cool use out of the tools we have in there, and they were around just in case the Y'all Squad needed to show up. And thankfully, it's looking like they don't need to do that. They didn't have to be there, which is good. Um, so that's something that we're going to try to do more often. Y'all squad's always going to show up whenever we're asked, when, whenever the help is needed. Uh, we're working on a nationwide network of emergency managers that we're working with uh, in coordination uh, with the National Weather Service as well. Um, trying our best to uh, make sure that um, we're crossing all of our T's, dotting all of our I's and all that stuff. Um, and one of the big things that is always a big problem for us is just a lack of communication uh, between our headquarters 
people and our people in the field. So we're combining those two by trying to put our, you know, our y'all squad people in the vicinity of these storms at every possible opportunity. Honestly, on days like today, it's actually going to be rare that we're able to do that. It's not every day that you can just at the very last minute decide to drive 10 hours or 12 hours in one direction just in case, just to literally turn back around and come home. Um, a lot of times the, when we're going to be able to do this is when we have a day or two to plan ahead. But it was awesome that we were able to do it today. Um, because uh, hopefully in the future, when, when we do this again, um, we, we know what to do. We know everything, all the steps that we need to take. And eventually it's going to be uh, useful and it's going to be, we're going to be glad that we uh, were there. I vote we get an actual helicopter. I agree. We're, we're working on it. We're going to get old Dibble his pilot license there. Like his actual pilot license. How about Blyvel? Y'all got about uh, 15 minutes or so before the strong winds uh, come to you. Not seeing a whole lot in the way of rotation, but certainly not seeing no rotation at all. There's a slight chance of some sort of spin up here. Otherwise, look for 50, 60 mile per hour winds and potentially some power outages and stuff there near Blyville. Make a dominator. I'm going to leave that to Mr. Timmer. We could do that. That is something that we've thought about. That's definitely something that we could do. Like that's a reality. But. I'm going to leave that to Mr. Timmer. Who knows what we'll be doing five years from now, though. There's a. A million different avenues we could go down cool things that we can do to help people and make good content and uh, maybe even uh, work more on the science side of things uh, with you know the resources that we have I don't know if you guys notice or not but every time we post a YouTube video we are trending number one on like all of YouTube um, so like we're the channel is growing significantly the, the amount of stuff that we're going to be able to do is um, gr also growing significantly. So it's uh, it should be fun to watch what happens uh, in the future here with the with the channel. And the goal is always going to be to help people first. That that's why we've got the nonprofit. That's why we go live during severe weather events and stuff. But we're going to have some fun too. We're we're going to try to do some more um, interactive storm chasing stuff at some point and just make good videos, you know? The storm is just about to make it into Blyville, and then it will cross into the uh, Tennessee area there on the western side. Uh, once again, Osceola, Fulton, Olive Branch, Tomato, Tomato. <laughs> Y'all are in the path, son. Uh, when Arkansas tonight, there's going to be some storms uh, a little bit later, but for 
for the most part, it's going to be um, all right. I, I, I don't see anything too terrible uh, for when uh, in the next hour or so you're going to get the brunt of whatever happens. Flooding risk is honestly going to be pretty high and, and maybe some strong winds, but that's, that's about it. Less than 1,000 away now from 1.5 million subscribers here on the channel. Crazy, crazy stuff. Hit that subscribe button. And I don't have any, I don't have any more body parts to reveal. We did the leg reveal at a million. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, that, that's about it. That's the best as that that's as good as we're going to get. So, uh, you know, just do it out of the good kindness of your own heart. Getting late y'all. This is y'all after dark officially. For added context, at a million subscribers, we did a leg review. We weren't here because that was probably quite the sentence from me if you didn't have the context. Um, because a lot of people didn't believe that I had legs. Because if you have only ever watched the channel, you know, watched the videos and the live streams, you've only ever seen me from here up. For all they knew, I was some AI generated weather person. So I had to reveal my legs to show that I was a true human, and I did that at a million subscribers. I tell you what, we might do a y'all force one tour at 1.5 million. If, if the guys are up for it, they're, they're probably pretty tired. <laughs> I don't know if they're up for it or not. Wait, you aren't AI? Nope, not me. Your word choices? <laughs> you know, it's it's not even that late. Oh, whoa. Is the microphone really loud right now? It's doing that thing again, man. Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Test, test, test. One, two, three. Is that... Ooh. I'm sorry, guys. We've got to figure out whatever's wrong with the microphone. Armpit reveal at 2 million. That's something. That's something that is possible. Are we north of Jonesboro? Yes. Can you hear us? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can hear us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. You are upside down. Are we upside down? We yes. are upside down. Do I need to turn around? <laughs> okay, now you're not upside down. Okay, Austin completely flipped the camera. Well, um, now you are upside down. Okay, right. Now <laughs> we are upside down. Let's keep on rolling. <laughs> Sorry, there we guys. go. There we go. Okay, so we are north of Jonesboro, 
and I just want to kind of give a recap of everything that happened. Riley, why don't you come over here and help me? Um, so basically, we just went through the storm. Um, it was a lot of wind, a lot of rain. Um, still raining, just a little bit, a little bit of lightning. Um, it's actually slowed down compared to what it was. So that's something. What are you doing with that? Okay. <laughs> So we got more light, apparently. Um, and then, uh, so basically, what did you think of the experience? Well, uh, I'm going to be honest. I thought it was pretty tame as far as storm events go. Uh, there wasn't a lot that happened, but obviously that is a good thing. Uh, there was a lot of one thing, and that is lightning. Uh, there's still a lot of lightning. You can see it off in the distance. We have two pretty decent sized storm cells, one off to our south and another one off to our north. Uh, but these aren't going to be that significant. We did have our severe thunderstorm warning downgraded to just 60 mile per hour winds. So it is still severe, but it is on the lower level of severe thunderstorm. So hopefully we see that continue to die out and we might actually have no severe threat, which would be amazing. Starting to rain more. Yeah, I'm getting cold, guys. We got to go back inside. But I think we're all willing to do um a tour of the of the y'all force one. If you guys want to see that, if you guys get we get to the 1.5 million, which I'm so excited for. That's awesome. Um, I will have to say though, they should have issued a warning for mosquitoes because they do not play around here. I made up, made a lot. <laughs> so that's something. Okay. All right. Can we go back inside? <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you for the report from uh, Y'all Force One. That was great. Um, uh, I think we're going to get a lot of hey, Ryan, use out Brad. of that. Uh, we finally were able to get through Jonesboro uh, to uh, catch up to the back end of this uh, of this squall line that's coming through with QLCS. Um, the plan right now is to penetrate the rear end. Uh, and be able to get on the forward flank of this storm to be able to view it. Uh, so we're going to try to penetrate the rear end. <clears throat> All right. Uh, sounds good there. Uh, we're watching you. We've got you pulled up full on uh, the screen there. So uh, just <laughs> keep me updated on, on what's going on next. And um, I, I don't know how much longer we're going to keep going. Uh, but as long as you're going... Just keep talking to us, buddy. Uh, it's been one heck weird day, <laughs> but uh, we'll get through it. And um, yeah, stay safe out there. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on, guys. Oh, it's been too long. It's been too All right, long. copy that. Ten four. Uh, um, this is uh, this has been. Definitely an interesting severe weather uh, live coverage. I and I do. I'm very confident now that this will be the first Ryan Hall y'all live stream with zero, zero tornado warnings whatsoever. You gotta love it. So uh, y'all force one is gonna be back on the road here soon, and uh, they they did say that they were okay with doing a um, a uh, Y'all Force One tour if we could hit the 1.5 million. We are at uh, 1,499,451. So we have a little bit less, well, a little bit less than 500 to go now. Um, and then we'll get that... Uh, Get the Y'all Force One tour. It's really cool. Really cool the way we've got it set up. Probably pretty messy right now because it was all, all thrown together very quickly this morning. But it's cool. So hit that subscribe button. And get your brother and your mother to subscribe as well. Carol says, I just have to say the warnings on here came well before the warnings came from our local TV station. We hear that. We hear that a lot. 
we love our local TV stations. No, no beef between the YouTubers and the, the TVers. That is something that we hear a lot. Yeah, Brad's giving us a real good view of the, the rear end of the storm here as he comes down towards Truman. How are we looking at in Clarksville, Tennessee tonight? Uh, you're looking okay. Uh, heavy rain uh, and potential flooding, in my opinion, would be the thing that I would be most concerned about up there. Uh, we got an update from Andy. What do you got for us, Andy? Hey, Ryan. Somehow we do eclipse uh, the no tornado warnings for this entire stream. It's going to be up near Burdett. Arkansas, the northeast uh, part uh, to the south of Blyville. I had no idea it was pronounced that way. I've been watching this part of the line, but n neglected to talk to you about it because um, it is not wrapped together anything significant. But now I see both sides of, of the possible rotation being rather strong, yet um, separated a little bit here. So if this comes together at all, or the National Weather Service deems it uh, enough of a uh, concerned especially given radar beam orientation due south uh, then you might see one right there that would include tomato is what i've seen uh, people say it's pronounced as so that would be a heads up for ripley halls areas around dyersburg but probably to the south uh, crossing the mississippi into tennessee okay thank you meteorologist andy hill this is the area of interest he is talking about um i see it I see the potential there uh, for uh, our potential maybe first tornado warning of the night. Um, let's hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but if it does, uh, tomato, 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 and hauls, uh, you guys would be uh, in the path of that particular storm there. Regardless of whether or not it's got a tornado in there, uh, you are in the path of this storm uh, just in terms of the wind and hail. Uh, less than a three-quarter inch hail, uh, but around 60 mile per hour winds are possible all the way up to Dyersburg, down to Halls, Ripley, Covington, Brighton, and uh, uh, Millington. Uh, all you guys are in the path of this thing. Same storm that hit y'all Force One and Brad Arnold's coming for y'all right now. Homemader? No. <laughs> no. That actually might be how it's pronounced. That that would actually be cool if it was not tomato, not tomato, but tomato. I would I would support that. Getting close, less than three hundred to go now before we hit one point five million. Uh, Clint Weaver, by the way, gifted 10 memberships. Everybody say thank you to Clint. We, we've had something like 100 new gifted members today. Thank you, guys. Uh, Anthony Scott's been a member for 17 months. Um, Melanie became a high risker. Matthew became a slight risker. Thanks, thanks to everybody for all your wonderful support today. Been an awesome stream, despite the fact that we really just haven't had a whole lot to talk about. We're just catching up. We're we're all friends here, and and it's been too long since we've hung out together. These are great circumstances, actually. Usually, when we hang out, there's all kinds of scary stuff going on. Tonight, we've got some strong storms, but it's not nearly as bad as when we usually meet. Um, Andy warned a large scale EF3 tornado in central New York about 20 minutes before the National Weather Service confirmed it. Thank you uh, to all of you. I live about 60 miles west of Turin and can't imagine something not being warned somehow. Be safe. Um, yeah, that, um, Andy, uh, completely nailed. Um, calling a, a tornado, uh, the, uh, what was it? I, I've lost track of the days. It was the day that I was storm chasing out in the field. So I wasn't, I, did, I wasn't there when it happened specifically. Uh, but Andy, um, 
did a great job and helped a lot of people who were watching uh, his stream uh, the other day in North Carolina when that happened. Uh, Andy, do you have anything to add to that? Do you have anything um, you, you, you want to say to Coco Co there who, who was talking to you? Or did I pretty much cover it? Uh, you d you did cover it. Besides, it, that one was in New York. I mean, it was oh, okay. there was also windstorms in North Carolina, Virginia, <laughs> D.C. area, but uh, the the largest or the strongest nadir was uh, unwarned for most of its life near Turin in New York, where they said they live sixty miles west of there. I've also gotten several comments on uh, that stream that was on Monday the sixth uh from people who lived in the area too who were able to relay information from my stream about it because it did go unwarned uh, for quite some time and then it finally was warned but we were able to track that um confidently meteorologically soundly uh as it was occurring and you know the national weather service is not perfect they are humans just like us and we should be uh, co always collaborative with them um, to be to make sure we can get uh, the most and best information out uh, as possible. So that was an example on Monday of me being able to contribute from my perspective and then, uh, you know, double check, triple check that it was actually occurring. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but nobody's perfect for sure. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, just another reason why we're so lucky to have uh, meteorologist Andy Hill uh, on our team and just as a part of the weather enterprise as a whole. Um, Andy uh, and uh, uh, Riley and uh, everybody that has a position on the team where, that deals with spotting and um, uh, reporting uh, storms and, and dealing with storm chasers and receiving reports from the public and stuff, um, we've also been uh, granted media uh, access to some of the, um, the channels uh, in, with direct communication with the National Weather Service, which we're going to start using here soon. Uh, so that should help us out both ways uh, pretty good uh, in, in the future. So lots of cool stuff happening over here. And um, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that comment. Thanks for that super chat. Really appreciate it. All the kind words. Christian, thank you. Victoria says, uh, do you work from a st from in a storm shelter? So if a storm comes, it won't take you off the air. Um, no, but uh, we are working on that. Um, in fact, tomorrow there's a company coming here to uh, the weather house and installing a storm shelter here. And it's, it's going to be a big deal. You guys will hear about it. We're, we're filming it and gonna be really cool you'll 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 know what i'm talking about sooner than later um but yeah we're, we're working on making the um the weather house here more foolproof more fail failure modes so that you know if we lose power internet or whatever it doesn't matter internet we're pretty much taken care of thanks to elon musk we've got satellites out the wazoo and they work really well as long as it's not like in, as long as you're not in the middle of a really strong storm those things, the, the, the Starlink internet works really well. Uh, and of course, our local ISP here supports us awesomely. But yeah, we're working on all, all that stuff. Over here in rural Kentucky, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm broadcasting from the middle of nowhere in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. I'm Appalachian through and through, son. That's where the accent comes from, if, you, if you've caught it. Storm looks to be grazing Memphis to the north. So Memphis, you might actually miss out on some of the stronger winds, which is good news. Uh, Dyersburg, can't say the same for you. Uh, Halls, Gates, and Ripley uh, also looks like the stronger winds are going to be coming for you. Are we going on any weather in southern Mississippi? Not much. No nothing to write home about. Uh, Keenan says they should make a new twister with you as the main character, box office smash. I disagree. I don't think I should be the main character in um, Twister. Uh, I think that should be Reed Timmer. And um, 
But there, there is a sequel coming out. You guys know that, right? I, I don't think myself nor Reed was cast in it, though, unfortunately. But thank you for the very kind super chat, Keenan. I would gladly be in the Twister movie at, at some level. I would even play Jonas if they wanted me to. <laughs> He's a night crawler. Hey, Ryan, you are within 100 subscribers of 1.5 million. Yes. Here we are, guys. It's the final countdown. We're about to hit uh, 1.5 million subscribers here. We started this channel. We started posting weather videos on this channel in January of 2021. It is currently August of 2023. Went from zero to 1.5 million uh, subscribers in that time. Um, and it's been nuts. It's been a wild ride. Uh, my uh, whole life, you can ask the, the people who've been around me since I was little, uh, I, I, all I wanted to do was be a weather person and a YouTuber. Never, never in a million years thought you could combine them. <laughs> One day, decided to try it, and here we are. Very cool. And of course, whenever we cross over the 1.5 million mark here, the uh, Y'all Force One has promised us a Y'all Force One tour. So hopefully we can get that within the next 30 minutes or so. And then we'll probably wrap up the stream, to be honest. Here we go. We're within 10 now. I don't, when we hit a million, we had confetti and everything. I don't have anything special. Here, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm just going to make the lights go a bunch of different colors. Here we go. There we go. 1.5 million subscribers. We did it. It's official. Thank you all so much. Um, that's over 8,000 subscribers today alone. <laughs> well, yeah, when we hit a million, we had, like, music and confetti and everything. We'll plan better next time. <laughs> But seriously, thank you all so much for giving uh, us the opportunity to do this dream come true for me. And we've got like a whole team now. We got like real uh, jobs for for several people and opportunities opening for people. And it's like it's super cool. And it's all thanks to you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey, Ryan, give us like five, ten minutes. We are going to get to some place with light so we can actually give you a proper tour of the Suburban. Okay. That sounds good to me. Y'all just tell me when you're ready. Oh, what do we got here? The weather wife. Again. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> Congrats, Ryan. I am so proud of you all. Oh. Kay, thanks for becoming a moderate risker. Sage, uh, thanks for being a member for 22 months. And Ben, thanks for the one gifted membership. Congratulations to everybody who's a new member.
how many members i don't know the exact number um but there's a couple thousand members we used to only have like 20 and the uh, the the members only live streams were extremely um uh, intimate like there you know there's we we I, we got on like a first name basis with everybody there in fact there's probably some people watching this stream right now who were there during those um but now the members only lives are they're they're pretty happening because we have a lot of members now which is cool it's even better oh that's crazy We hit um, 1.5 million subscribers at exactly 12 a.m. midnight on August 10th. <laughs> when the clock struck midnight, the counter went to 1.5 million. Hey Ryan, it's uh, Brad. Um, still trying to get south towards Memphis, uh, but I think we are about to have our first tornado of the day. Um, it is looking like uh, rotations ramping up northwest of Ripley, Tennessee, so you may want to check that out. So he's talking about the, uh, the area of rotation that we've been watching up here uh, that went through Tomater. Uh, now moving towards Ripley, and we are still watching this. Um, but Brad Arnold's down here. Yep, uh, Brad, we, we've got our eye on that. Uh, thanks for uh, pulling our attention over there. I don't know if you saw or not, but we uh, the channel just hit uh, 1.5 million subscribers. I uh, just wanted to uh, shout you out. Guys, I don't think we could have done this without uh, Brad's tornado sniffing abilities. And Brad, I, I don't know uh, if everybody already knows or not, but if, if you want to uh, tell these guys where they can go to get the direct tornado sniffing experience, uh, go ahead and tell them that. You got a YouTube channel? Hey, yeah, uh, congratulations, man. That is a big accomplishment. 1.5 mil, that is incredible. Um, yeah, if, if you want to come and follow me and talk with me directly, we can talk uh, in, in, in the chat and things like that on my YouTube channel. Uh, just search for Brad or Storm Chaser Brad Arnold. I'd uh, love to have everybody be able to join um, and uh, be able to socialize with people that are watching the stream and things like that. So, uh, But congrats again, man. That is a, that is a huge accomplishment. Uh, I know we've all worked very hard to make that happen. Um, and it's, it's crazy to see how far it's come in such a short period of time. Awesome. We love Brad. We love Brad over here. And of course, we got to thank the weather wife. We could not, definitely could not be here without the weather wife. <laughs> the weather wife allowed me to drop everything on a whim. At the same time, we had our first child to try doing a YouTube channel about the weather and use the biggest room in our house as my studio instead of our bedroom. So that's super awesome. And she also is probably responsible for like half of our members <laughs> from all the gifts. <laughs> oh, and there's Frank. Gotta shout out Frank too. Frank's been a member for 27 months. Uh, congratulations, Ryan. Thank you, everyone. I'm blown away uh, by what this has become the best job ever. Frank is... OG, OG, Frank's been here forever. Member for 27 months, been working with uh, me for even longer than that. And uh, super helpful uh, in the Discord server, which if you guys haven't joined the Discord server yet, consider doing that. 
And in all other aspects of everything we do, Frank's just a jack of all trades, helps out with a little bit of everything. Uh, can you give us a quick overview of the whole storm? I sure can. We've just been kind of hyper-focused on this one little area here because this is the most um, concerning part of the storm. We've got that area of rotation up here near Ripley. Not sure if that's going to cause a tornado or not, but we're watching it very closely. Uh, regardless, this is going to cause damaging winds. Isolated damaging winds around Covington, Brighton, Millington, Ripley, Halls, and Gates over the next couple of minutes or so and then this is probably going to move towards Jackson I don't think it's going to get much stronger I think that this is going to stay around the same intensity or maybe even get a little bit weaker the deeper it gets into uh, Tennessee so we're we're on the downhill we're, we're coming down now uh, off of the uh, the severe weather threat uh, something else that I'm seeing is more convection, more storms popping up back here in the middle of Arkansas. Some of these will go severe, um, and you can see the ones just west of Little Rock. They're popping up over here. They're going to move right towards town. These could become severe uh, in terms of producing large hail, damaging winds before they get there. Uh, but if not, these will likely congeal into a more uh, linear kind of squall line and eventually move through Little Rock early in the morning. Severe threat is not low, uh, but it's certainly not high either tonight in Little Rock. Um, so just just know that there's a chance for some storms. Some of them can be strong, but nothing exceptional is expected tonight. The, the thing that I would worry about the most in, in a situation like this is if we get in an area where there's a lot of moisture added to these storms and they get really robust and they train over the same areas over and over again, flash flooding could be a pretty big problem here. I'm also worried about that in Kentucky, specifically Western Kentucky, uh, where we've got a uh, pretty happening area of uh, uh, heavy rain uh, coming down between Mayfield and Hopkinsville. If that continues for quite some time, we'll see some flash flooding out here as well. The storms down around Dallas have pretty much died out. We got one left down here near Sulphur, Sulphur Springs below severe limits. Uh, the ones in Alabama, for the most part, have died out. We've got one continuing to chug along down here in Georgia, uh, where we've got a severe thunderstorm warning for Andalia and Vienna uh, until, well, for the next 35 minutes or so. And that's pretty much it. That, that's pretty much all that's going on here. The, our main area of concern is right here in West uh, Tennessee. Is Middle Tennessee going to be affected at all? Yes, but it's going to be like your normal summer thunderstorm. Uh, it's on the low end of the severe level, more than likely. Amber says, I remember standing in my living room holding my newborn in the spring of 2021 watching your coverage for the first time. Congratulations on 1.5 million. Amber, thank you for being here and sticking around for so long. That's awesome. Um, spring of 2021 was literally some of the first live streams that we did. David G, I recognize that name. <laughs> David, you know, <laughs> David's been around here forever. Um, uh, David G says, uh, this is for Stephanie letting you stay up in the winter storms when you called us out for sharing the stream because it was five of us. Congratulations. Is this weird model for New Jersey uh, real tomorrow? I don't think there's anything uh, crazy going on in New Jersey tomorrow, David. Um, unfortunately for you, I know you like the the... You like it to be a little bit more interesting in Jersey. I don't, I don't see anything crazy going on tomorrow in Jersey. This winter, though, David, we're going to have some fun, I think.
the all force one yeah we're we're still waiting on them to get to a proper place uh, to give us a tour i think they're pulling in now though yeah we're pulling in right now okay you need a new mic ryan i know i don't know what's wrong with what what i've got it gets loud it gets too quiet it gets too loud it gets too quiet it jumps around It's a really good mic. That's the problem. I don't know. There's not a lot of better mics that you can get. Might be a problem with the audio mixer. Bash. We've got Bash in here. Bash has been around for a very long time as well. He says thanks for or congratulations on 1.5 million. Been here for 19 months as an official sponsor. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. They need a new mic. That's true. I also need a new mic though. But they need a new mic in the y'all mobile. That's that's certain. We're we're already in the process of getting that worked out. Hey, Ryan, you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes, I hear you. Are All you right. ready? We are ready. Are you giving the tour? Let us know when you got us up. I've got you up now. All right, so this is the back. We have um, our power inverter. We have one ATEM switcher here. So this takes all of, or this was what our drone goes into and one of our cameras. Give us a so zoom I in on them buttons this. there, Kyle. Come on hey, now. Show them buttons. <laughs> Ryan loves the buttons. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I would click those buttons, but if I were to click those buttons, that would mess everything up. So we're not going to click those buttons. Uh, this is our Phoenix Pro. This is our in-ear monitors. So everyone in the car is wired up with a headphone, and we can all hear what Ryan's saying at all times. Uh, we also have two monitors. Now, each of these monitors go to a... a Mac computer. Uh, I think they're Mac Studios, right? What are they, Ryan? You know. Mac Minis. Oh, wow. That's trippy. Trippy, boys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Kyle, what are you doing? Yeah, Mac yeah. Studios. Mac Minis. Mac Minis, my bad. They're basically Mac Studios. Now. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all we got going on back here. Um, let's see if we can get... Oh, of oh, course. Yeah. We have this. This is what our mics are going into. Our Sure mics. We have like three hey, of them, I believe. Up. Um, we have a back camera for the rear view, and then you also have two side cameras. So we have a view out each side. Now, if we come over to the side more and look on top of the roof, you can see our first Starlink dish. This is a Starlink roam dish, and then we also have another Starlink dish up there. That is the other Starlink dish because, you know, you can never have too much Elon Musk on your car. <laughs> Uh, if we come into the back seat, we have two stream decks to control both of our computers that we use when we're streaming, and we also have another duplicate monitor of each is in the back, so we can see what's going on as we're in the seat. So Kyle sits in this side. This is a computer that runs everything connected to Zoom, and then I sit on that side. That is our Streamlabs computer, so that's everything you see on our Chaser feeds. Uh, if we come up front, we got Chandra. We're going to expose Chandra. Here we go. Say hi, Chandra. She did not say hi. Uh, well, we're going to continue. Don't forget the roof rack. We did. Oh, yeah, the roof rack. Yeah, we have two cameras up here. Uh, one goes out the front and one faces back at the inside of the car. Custom-made roof Custom-made roof rack. By yours truly. By Austin. We love Austin. <laughs> Austin, do you want to say hi? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right. And yeah, that's pretty much what we got going on. Possibly the best chase vehicle. Not possibly. It is the best, not chase vehicle. We're just, it's a good vehicle for us to have. It's a good resource. We can use it for anything we need it to. And it's going to be really useful when we have things like this. So we want to be out in the field quicker and be the first people, the first boots on the ground after we have a bad tornado, a bad hurricane, a bad anything. This will enable us to be able to get there. Uh, I know we just hit 1.5 million subscribers. So I want to thank all you guys for subscribing. The fact that you guys support our channel, watch our videos, watch our live streams donate through super chats that is what makes this possible without you guys this would not happen uh yeah that's pretty much all we have for the what was we calling it uh, <laughs> y'all force one yeah y'all force one yeah <laughs> sorry that there's been like 40 names thrown out for it uh, but yeah that's pretty much all we got going on here uh we definitely have improvements that need to be made to it but what or yeah, uh, cable management is practically non-existent, but we don't talk about that. We just appreciate that it works most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much all we have going on here. Any questions in chat or Ryan about the y'all force one or anything else? Um, I, I I'll monitor chat here for a minute. I don't see anything yet, I, I, but I don't have anything. I think you covered everything exceptionally well, exceptionally well. All right, we'll awesome. Give chat a second because I know they're a little delayed. Um, right. let's uh, Oh, they want a camera guy yeah. reveal. Can we get a camera, camera guy? Oh, camera guy uh -oh. reveal. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's Kyle. There's Kyle. <laughs> oh, Kyle. Yeah. We'll get a little Kyle interview. Kyle. I'm normally behind the camera. Yeah, I don't be I don't be good on that. So yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, God, that's great. Uh, yeah, normally I'm uh setting like changing scenes and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's about it. Nothing really too cool. Awesome. So. Awesome. I'm just awkwardly yeah, he's, the yeah, he's probably <laughs> zooming in on my face or something. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, we'll right up, <laughs> okay yeah well there's your camera back camera guy we love our camera guy it wouldn't be possible without kyle wow Hi. we're standing underneath the roof here but oh, yeah. it's raining underneath the roof more than it's raining outside the roof so i don't really know what to say about that but that's happening oh also probably the best part about the suburban is even though the suburban is there i could like walk over here with the wireless camera the what the drone they want to see the drones. They want to see the drones. Oh, and by the way, um, something else that we have that we weren't able to take today uh, is a tow behind uh, trailer. Um, and you know, anytime we need to take supplies or anything like that, we've we've got the ability to do that as well. We just we weren't able to take it with us today. It's huge. It it'll it carries a lot. I don't know how big it is exactly, but it's it's a good one. Phantom. Yeah, we have a yeah, Phantom, Phantom 3 Advanced Pro V2, and then we also have just a normal Phantom 3 Advanced. Those are the two drones we use. Uh, this, this is the one we had in the air today. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it. I'm kind of holding the camera awkwardly. But yeah, this is the one we had in the air today, and I mean, it did just fine, and I think we it was up there in 25, 35 mile an hour winds. Yeah, this is the awesome. one we had up uh, during the extra chamber. Yeah. There you go. Uh, what uh, somebody asked, what camera are we currently looking at right now? Like, what is this camera that you're uh, using? What? Oh, that, that is the Canon XA50. It's a camcorder. Yeah, it's a ca camcorder. Uh, Canon XA50. Very good. Oh. Wendy, Adrian's drone's trying to fly away on us. All right. Well, I'm gonna go back here to where there's not as much wind noise. Uh, I don't know that we have, but we're using wireless. We're using wireless uh, HDMI transmitters. Yeah, yeah well, I was going to say that, yeah. and then someone asked about the drones. Yeah. Here, let's show them. Let's go on a walk around the gas station, show them how far we can go. All right, here we go. So, well... How far you want us to go, Ryan? How far should we test it? Uh, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how far you right, can well, let's just, go. We'll just keep going this way. Uh, well, over here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It looks <laughs> like you might be actually. Oh, we can talk about flash flooding. We have oh, a perfect oh, example of flash flooding right here. This bean field is wet. Very <laughs> wet, in fact. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say besides that's a lot of water that's not <laughs> supposed to be there. <laughs> but when you have water that's not supposed to be there, you call that a flood. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now that yeah. right there is real reporting, guys. Journalism. I don't think we've really experienced journalism until now. <laughs> that, yeah. that was and awesome. Then, when there's so that's also a flood. Now if we look further over here, <laughs> there's still water where there's not supposed to be water. Mm -hmm. So that's also called a flood. Gotcha. But now this right here. This water, this is just called like a puddle. This is gotcha. a flood. It's okay. Just a puddle. That, that'll be gone tomorrow. That that won't be gone tomorrow. But gotcha. yeah, it seems like this camera goes as far as we need it to be. I don't know what other puddles and water I can talk about. <laughs> well, I think that uh, that's you did great. I think that that can conclude our um, y'all force one uh, tour. And I think we've answered any questions that anybody has. So thank you guys very much. We'll let you get back on the road to wherever you're getting to, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks for everyone for watching. <laughs> that was fun. That was real fun. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's your Y'all Force one. Uh, lots of cool stuff going on there. Um just not uh it, it's not very easy to do a a, a live stream uh and, and try to keep it high quality brad arnold uh, all these people that you see that do live streaming like storm chasing on a very consistent basis they've probably got similar setups if not i i, I don't know exactly what they've got but you literally need all that stuff to make it watchable and um so that we're experimenting with that. We're trying to see what works and what doesn't. A lot of that equipment in there is just old leftover stuff that we've had as a part of my setups as we've upgraded my equipment and stuff like that. I've been in the business of making YouTube videos for years uh, and I've accumulated a lot of stuff over uh, that time. Um, so a lot of that stuff uh, is it came from old ventures that I've had uh, or like old versions of the setup that I'm using here. Um, so w we have the ability to kind of hodgepodge setups together because I have so many leftover parts <laughs> from other sort of live streaming setups I've built in the past. Adam says, congrats on the 1.5 million. I found you a few months ago and been sold ever since. I love the opportunity to learn about the weather on to 2 million. Yeah, absolutely. I, I never imagined that we would be able to get to uh, 1 million. Uh, but when we broke that, I, I quickly learned that the ceiling here is, is probably pretty high. I, I see this channel getting way up there uh, one day and doesn't really matter to me how many subscribers uh, we have as long as we are sticking to why we started the channel and we're helping people and I am just doing things that I'm passionate about and, and, and like I don't get burnt out and end up viewing this as a job and I don't want to come here because I think if that happens, then maybe whatever is valuable uh, about this channel uh, will cease to exist. Uh, so I'm trying to just make sure that we don't get ahead of ourselves uh, we're not trying to become the weather channel. We're not trying to get a big skyscraper in Atlanta and, and hire 500, you know, people. Uh, we're trying to just do what we've been doing, but at a consistently better level. And I think that as long as we do that, um, we'll continue to serve the, the people who uh, choose to view their weather information this way in the best way possible. So, um, I think that's it, y'all. I think that is it. Super huge shout out to everybody that uh, subscribed. Shout out to Andy. 
Um, everybody in the Y'all Squad Mobile, the Y'all Force One, uh, shout out to Carly and Allie behind me um, uh, doing some of the producer work. Uh, shout out to Frank Kinsey, my wife, and everybody else involved. There's a lot of people. Um, <laughs> To, uh, a lot of people involved. Uh, so thank you all so much for allowing uh, me to do this. And the next time we talk uh, in a live setting, I hope it's about snow. <laughs> I hope we're tracking a big old big daddy snowstorm. Um, there's a chance it'll be another tornado situation. There's a chance it'll be a hurricane. But I hope it's snow. <laughs> Uh, but in the meantime, we are getting really efficient here. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but we've had a lot of content come out recently. Main channel video after main channel video. Uh, we've got a lot of extra channel videos coming out. We're getting active on TikTok again, which we're almost at 2 million followers on TikTok. Um, what we're trying to do here now is just get really good at creating videos on a very consistent basis. Um, so that whenever the time comes that there is a huge tornado heading towards a, a town, the next time we get a rolling fork, the next time we get a Mayfield, we'll be there and the uh, potential audience, uh, the potential reach will be much higher because of the audience that we've built through this more evergreen, freestanding content, viral content that we're creating on a regular basis through these channels. So it's literally all for this. Like everything that we do is a funnel that leads to the live streams uh, that then ultimately leads to our 501c3 nonprofit organization, the All Squad, um, where we're trying to help people in really unique ways. So yeah, it's all working. The vision is uh, coming. It, it's coming too. So I uh, couldn't do that without you. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop rambling now and I'm going to let you guys go to sleep. Um, and yeah, make sure you download Radar Omega. If you haven't got a Radar app yet, it would help me a lot and you're not going to regret it. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye.